Hello. Hello. We are doing the Nosferatu episode. This is... I told it... We, this is our second time trying to record this. Yep. So I'll just tell the story again. This is the clan that got me into Vampire the Masquerade. Back... How I got into the fandom was I knew about Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines ahead of time. And you had Cryotic back then, back when he had good faith before that Discord admin accident happened. My favorite uh, way to put it, yes. <laughs> he played the game. He plays the Malkavians, but the Nosferatu caught my eye. And the whole and the segments with the Nosferatu. Bertram Tongue was cool, but it was the it was the Dins and Gary Golden in particular, after I started looking more into the game. That got me hooked on the Nosferatu. I mean, this is these guys are inspired by the movie, and they're these nasty-looking fuckers that look like zombies. Yep. That have this massive information network, and looking into their disciplines could control animals, and all the implications behind that were just giving their blood to a mosquito. The mosquito could go and get information for them. So, you know that saying, "I wish I was a fly on the wall when blah 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 happened." Yep. That's literal with the Nosferatu. And it wasn't until, what, well, like, years later that I figured out this wasn't a standalone game. Uh, I knew about Redemption, but I, I never played it and I never had that much interest in it. Mm -hmm. And then I found, found out the tabletop existed and the Nosferatu were playable. And when I first got into Vampire, that was the clan that I thought I was going to be, that, that was going to be my player character when I started. But then I found out about the Salubri and then the Asimites and then the Giovanni, and the Giovanni took my heart. And then I finally got around to playing it with our friend Dustin Murphy, who is a subscriber and in the server, and I end up playing a Bali vampire instead. <laughs> the thing about the Nosferatu is that like actually being able to play them in a full on vampire campaign is incredibly difficult because they are incredibly hard to hide. Like, yeah, because like you look at our thumbnail, you look at you look at our character we have here. Uh, in case you're wondering who the fuck this is, I ran Las Vegas by Night, which Danson's also doing, but it's completely different stories. And we had an NPC in it that I made called Devi. This is what she looked like. Uh, granted, I used a pre-made ass at the time. This is, of course, the AI generated. Uh, what she would look like if I had this at the time we ran the game. Though she probably wouldn't really look like this. Uh, this would be a more accurate depiction of what she would end up looking like. <laughs> yep. Pretty freaky. <laughs> yeah, because the Nosferatu, true to form with the movie, you look freaky as shit when you are the Nosferatu. That is quite... They go into detail with, with the Embrace. We'll get into that later, but yep. you are a walking masquerade breach with this. Same when you play as the Harbingers of Skulls, same if you play the, the Samity. Same if you play a Zenichi and you have no chill and you don't know how to keep your vicissitude contained. <laughs> yeah. And same with the La Sombra if you use a Tenebration too much. It is incredible. But the Nosferatu, the Nosferatu, you're just fucked from the get-go. Yep. Basically, you are stuck but, hiding for the entire game. Unless, like, your when, character wears, like, a mask or something. But even then... If you have a game that's set, set during the the pandemic, that is the perfect time for you to play Nosferatu because I may be thinking, oh, there's still the smell, oh, there's still the look. Dog, I meet people in my job that look and smell like Nosferatu. That's not that bizarre. <laughs> yeah, it really isn't. Dog, that, that was a guy when I worked at Walgreens that I could fucking smell this dude before he stepped into the building. And... You could follow him. There was a smell trail that he would leave to the store. He he was you quite could literally tell... pig pen from uh, from peanuts. Yeah, and you could tell how long he had been and what aisle for how long. But on top of that, like the patchy facial hair, how he always like had his like head lean off to the side. That if you're saying a Nosferatu wearing a face mask, like a medical mask, couldn't blend in, you haven't been outside enough, <laughs> and you haven't. I haven't been to enough Walmarts and Walgreens. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, no matter where you, if <laughs> if you want to get inspiration to play Nosferatu, just go work retail or something. Go go onto the public freakout subreddit and see what's over there. <laughs> but yeah, so they're scary as fuck. However, they are probably one of the smartest factions, if not the smartest faction in Vampire the Masquerade. If it weren't for these guys, the Camarilla would have fallen apart. Yes. I mean, th them, the Malkavians, and the Tremir are the backbones of the Camarilla. The Ventru hold them all together, but if it wasn't for those for those three and the Ventru leading them, the Camarilla would could not could not function as a faction. No. You look at the Sabbat, you look at the Anarchs, you look at the Inkanu, all of them are in shambles in comparison to the Camarilla. Which is just the vampire Illuminati by this point. The Giovanni come close, but that's because the Giovanni are a literal family. I mean, they fuck each other, like brother and sister. Like, I'm sorry, your parents are brother and sister kind of shit. <laughs> that's how they're able to keep together. <laughs> I'm sorry, your parents are brother and sister, and that you are a fat sack of inbred shit. Oh my god, <laughs> that video is priceless. Yep, Ryan, be you alive or be you dead? I'm alive. You got attacked. I'm here. You got attacked on the way here by Nosferatu. Uh, yes, you're not wrong. We Did currently actually... have him hooked up to an IV for this episode. Oh. <clears throat> so, so, back. Uh, so Kyle, you change his blood bag while we go into the next um, yeah. the next segment. Ryan encountered the Nosferatu at work, and he said this post gave him cringe, and he's laying in bed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's exactly what's happening. Definitely not sitting at my desk. Nope. So there's. There's one character that everybody knows about. Everybody knows this character when everyone talks about the Nostratu. We can't talk about Clan Nostratu without bringing up Absimiliard. We have to bring this guy up. The creepiest now, of all of the Malkavians. The guy who's Malkavians trying to outdo Nostratu. the worm in terms of evilness and bitterness. Uh, there are fewer dicks in World of Darkness than Absimiliard. I mean, this guy is out doing some of the Melgen and Karna with some of the heinous shit that he's done in his life. Where no exaggeration, if Absimiliard were to meet Final Death, the world would prosper from it. This guy, this guy has it coming. <laughs> but who would and, be the one to deliver it, though? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, is that Absimiliard in terms of in terms of antediluvians, he's on the weaker side in comparison because there's two different stories as to what he was like back in the time of the first city, back in the time of the antediluvians walking the earth, back when the second generation was still alive. The Primogen's video on the Nosferatu is good. He goes into detail about what's in second edition. He did get one detail wrong. He's known as Nosferatu in first edition. He's only ever called Absimiliard in 2nd edition. That's where the name comes from. So, the way I'm going to tell this story, I am going to tell it as it is in 1st edition. Because Absimiliard is scarier in 1st edition. Gotta play this guy up a little bit. Yep. So, the fun thing about him. There is a page in... In the Gehenna book. In the Nightshade scenario, but when... All the Antediluvians show up at the same time and start causing Gehenna. Now, Absimiliard is in it, and the picture isn't that good. He's completely covered head to toe in robes. And he's standing right next to Ur, to Ur Shulgi, aka Hakim, if you believe in the Ur Shulgi diabolizing Hakim theory. And you might be wondering why is Absimiliard too chicken shit to show his face? And that is because this man is a belligerent narcissist who hates the way he looks, hates that he is Nosferatu, but, you know, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Yep. What was Nosferatu like prior to Gehenna? Well, no. Well, that prior to his first change. Let's go into it. Kyle, I am sending you the image as we speak. Yes. Now, you see this portrait? Yes. All right. So, going from left to right, that sa that saber-toothed tiger is Anoya. Well, a version of Anoya. That shadowy blob is Lasabra. 
I, he finally came out of the ocean. That's why he looks like. Yep. <laughs> Those little girls are collectively Malkav. That's freaky. Yeah. yeah, that's weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, the the woman behind them is Erakel, his sister. And to the to the left of that, to the right of that, that would be Absimiliard. The guy in the cloak or the... Well, there's two guys in the cloak. There's one really tall guy in a cloak, and then there's a shaven That could guy. also be Absimiliard. The other guy standing next to him is supposed to be Urshulgi, but we kind of can't tell between the two because they kind of look the same. One's white, one's black. So either that guy in the robe or that guy behind him is Absimiliard. I do find it's the shadow figure. Yeah. It's the shadow figure. There, there is no Lissandra. He... Yeah, yeah, he couldn't bother showing up for the picture. We got to stand in instead. <laughs> they just got like a cardboard cutout, vaguely Lissandra shaped. We spray painted Absimiliar to black and have have him be play the role of Lissandra. <laughs> yep. I do like the fact that my antediluvian is quite literally just a big fuck off saber tooth tiger. That that's Anoya when she's holding him back. Anoya, as you fight her. It's just this giant maw that opens up beneath you. That's the entire size of a city. It's the entire size of a county. And it just opens up and just eats you. And that's it. That That's your fight with Anoya. I didn't plan on <laughs> fighting that in a time soon. Now, zoom in on that fucker as we tell the story. Okay, so... So, absolutely... There's also some good fan art of him, too. But that, let's just go with this picture for now. Okay. Back in the ye olden times, back uh, right after Cain kills Abel, and he goes off and he makes the first city. You need some people to populate that city. One of those people is one Absimiliard. Known at the time, no, known in first edition as Nosferatu, but he would eventually gain that title, which directly translates to the Eternal later down the line. Absimiliard was this super sexy man, as sexy as Erakel. Just imagine like Gaston from Beauty and the Beast with how he looks, with like long flowing blonde hair, and the bulgy mu muscles, and a dick that hangs down between his knees. That's what he looked like back then. Good and, lord. And he was the best at hunting. He was a predator by nature. Name an animal, he could chase after it, he could kill it. If a T-Rex was alive around that time, he could hunt down the T-Rex and kill it. If he were up against a Garou, he would be able to get the upper hand in that fight. That's how skilled Absimiliard is. He's not strong, but he's got the talent to become just as deadly as the other Antediluvians. He's smarter. He fights smarter, not harder. And the thing with him is... He eventually caught the attention of one Zilla, you know, Cain's daughter, who, while Absimiliard was in the grass one night looking for his next kill, Zilla was sneaking up behind him. And as Zilla appeared and tried to attack Absimiliard, he stumbled out of the grass and directly into the moonlight. Zilla saw what he looked like and she thought to herself, oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She immediately pounced onto him, and they had the roughest, bloodiest foreplay you could imagine. Where that was the best sex of his life, and the last sex of his life. As very quickly afterwards, Zilla beat him to death in the middle of sex, and then embraced him. Fantastic. Good lord. <laughs> and Absimiliard wakes up, and he's different. He doesn't have a pulse anymore. His heartbeat's gone. And his skin's cold. And he finds out what he is, a vampire. And he thinks to himself, perfect. I get to be beautiful, badass me, forever. Nothing gets to change that. And he begins to study his powers. He and his brother in blood set... You know, the, the best person that ever lived, Set, started studying obtenebration together. Now, eventually, Set would abandon obtenebration and go all in on Serpentis. Absimiliard went all in on Obfuscate, 
there's other vampires that have this discipline, but nobody is better at it than the Nosferatu. We'll go into detail with Obfuscate and what all that can do later, but check it out. The dude can turn himself invisible and audible with no aura sense. You just cannot find Absimiliard. If this guy ever went to Torpor, how can we be sure? How do we know that's not a body double? How do we know he's not trying to mask his aura with someone else? That's kind of the horror story to Absimiliard, right? Because you just don't ever know where this guy is when you fight him. I mean, when he attacks you, you can't perceive what he's doing when he attacks you. That's you, how freaky the fight with Absimiliard is going to be. You cannot you comprehend the nature of Gaia's attack. Exactly. And there is a theory that Hakim was a blood sibling, but I don't believe that. Kane sired Hakim. We, we already went over that with the Asamite awesome episode. Now, as Sad goes off all the way back to Egypt to take his place as king, Absimiliard stays in the first city. And, of course, he is Zilla's off-again, on-again boyfriend. They have a very complicated relationship, to put it lightly. And Kane is not a fan of Absimiliard. I mean, it's his daughter. He he wants to choose who she dates. And at the time, you had to have the father's blessing. <laughs> Especially if that father was Kane, right? Yes. <laughs> so he likes that Absimiliard is strong and that he's badass, where physically this would be a perfect husband. But in terms of personality, this dude's a psychopath. So we would rather hook her up with someone like, I don't know, Solot, but that's not going to happen because Solot is asexual. Now, eventually, Absimiliard looks into a mirror and notices something. That foreplay he had with Zilla, while she was in the middle of it, he ac she accidentally pressed her thumbnail too deep beneath his left eye. Or right eye, depending on what how you want to say it. But it was next to his eye on his cheek. That left this teeny tiny white puncture mark on his face. And he flipped his shit when he saw that. He couldn't tolerate that a single bit of scar tissue was on his face. That drove him fucking ballistic when he saw that. But then he stopped. And he chilled. Zilla made him immortal. But with a blemish. He couldn't take that. So, he thinks. He wants to kill Zilla. But he knows that a wave of issues will come his way after he does that. Kane being the biggest one. So, Absimiliard gets an idea. There is rumor of this guy living in the Carpathian Mountains. The eldest, who apparently was all the evil of King Enoch, ripped out and thrown off into the wilderness, and then he escaped. Let's let's take a look at what he's doing. Absimiliard travels all the way to the land that would be known as Europe, and he looks and he thinks to himself, what in the hell is going on with you? You are the mountain. You made a pact with a devil, and you are going out creating these abominations that you're just throwing out into the woods and they're killing werewolves. This is awesome. How are you doing that? How are you doing this? <laughs> Absimiliard, over the course of a week, or whatever arbitrary amount of time you want to say the story is, studies Zimichi, and eventually figures out what the blood bond is. And he thinks to himself, I need to start siring some people. He goes off and he starts finding the most psychopathic, monstrous people he can find that Solot didn't already embrace. That that would be Clan Mali. So he finds the second most evil people in the world. And one of them, I won't talk about them right now, is one Vasilisa. We have mentioned this character before. Do you remember me bringing her up? Uh, which episode was that? Silver Fangs. Uh, is... My memory is shit, so... Yeah. No. Now, now, the first... The first vampire to be embraced into the Nektuku, which was like the proto Nosferatu, would be Baba Yaga, where, of course, we talked about her in the Russia episode. If you want to know about her, go check out Ridge Cross Russia. We did an episode on that. We went more into detail with her on that. So she's the first. 
And then hot on her heels is one Vasilisa who looks like this. Yep. An eight-year-old girl. Or boy. I it kind of depends. do vaguely recall this. Yeah. I did not go into Vasilisa's backstory. Vasilisa was a serial killer at age eight who killed people in his or her village and enjoyed doing it and was eventually caught like full on like Mike Myers, like the beginning of Halloween, put on the mask, sneaking into her sister's bedroom and stabbing her to death. That's what he did. And he got caught and was slated for execution. Absimiliard found out about him Thought it was hilarious what he was doing. Approached him and said, Hey kid, you want to do what you did but better? And Vasilisa, fully aware of what Absimiliard was, knowing the ramifications behind becoming a vampire, said yes. Absimiliard released him from prison after his embrace, and he massacred his entire village in a single night. Wonderful. <laughs> you gotta start him young, right? Yeah, basically. And... Grace. And he's still around. He never went to Torpor. He's still around, and he is Absimiliard's personal assassin. If Absimiliard personally wants someone dead, he sends Vasilisa after them. And Vasilisa, this isn't their true form anymore. Vasilisa doesn't consider themselves to be male or female anymore. They consider themselves to be a natural disaster and refer to themselves in a third-party, a-person um, I'm trying to say, like, not really transhuman, more like you weren't human to begin with. You were always a natural disaster. You just have the body for it now. That's how Vasilisa sees themselves. And they are so detached from reality. They see hunting Baba Yaga in uh, Russia by Night as a game, where upon you, the, uh, the Vampire Coterie players... Weakening Baba Yaga. He hops in, steals the kill, and then says, thank you for helping me kill Granny, and then dips without another word. And then find out that he existed, the Shadow Lords sought him out, made contact with him, and then the masks, the camp of the Shadow Lords, formed from that meeting. You know, the Shadow Lords that know about the Niktuku and are trying their best to get on the good side of the Niktuku. That's what their that's what their deal is. Little shadow lords so, being fucking idiots once again. Now that's yep. the danger of one Niktuku. You want to know just how dangerous this discipline spread is? How? Because they don't have the same discipline spread. So from a purely mechanical standpoint, they start off with aspects, celerity, and potence. No need for obfuscate. Fuck they can get obfuscate that. later, but yeah, yeah, just. Behold, they always know where you are because they can see the past, present, and future at the same time. Can immediately chase you down with celerity and then throw their fist through your chest, out your spine with one punch. That's that's how that's how scary deadly these guys are. Where if they were up against Bruja, I would say the Netuku would win. Yeah, and probably. There, there's a fun picture for opponents too on the VTM wiki where. Uh, make sure we're off the tower card for this one because yeah, this is a fun picture. Yeah, we're off. Um, yeah, this is what you can do with potence. No, right. I posted the wrong image. Fuck it. Give me a minute. That's more of a feeling. Uh, open image in new. No, I don't want to save that image. It's gory. Just copy it. Put it Damn. in the thing. All right. Here we go. This is what you can do. Quite literally, just punch him through his fucking head. Fold his head backwards and then squeeze it like a grape. Yep. Yeah. This is Tony from Hotline Miami is what this is. <laughs> so, behold, the, nose, the Nituku can do that with one finger. That's that's the level of physical prowess that they're on. And You think Vigo could have, take one? That's going to be a close fight. That's going to be a close fight. Like As strong as we Vigo Corinth is. Yeah, um... Sylvester Shrek, maybe, just because of how lucky he is. He is the opinion of luck. We got this, so. yeah. Yeah, you've, you've, got, you've got the forces of entropy on your side. I don't know, do you but... want a very talented gangrel sniper? Uh, yeah, <laughs> why not? And the 
We have many other Nictukus, such as Abraxas, Azazel, Echidna, Gorgo, Naklavi. Uh, uh, very biblical names, right? Yes. Um, what do they look like? What do they do? You don't know because nobody ever survived to tell the tale about what these Nictuku look like and what they do. They're that deadly. Where they have no history because nobody has survived to write down the history. <laughs> and with this elite force of assassins, I need to go down the line and talk about what vampires did and didn't participate in the killing of the second generation. We're, we're going to retract this. This is a little retraction that we're doing. Who participated in this? Set? No. Set wasn't part of that. I might have inferred that with the Malkav Malkavian episode. Set wasn't there. Don't don't worry about Seth. Right. Um, Hakim? No. Uh, the Eldest? No. La Sombra? No. Salat, absolutely not, because Salat liked him. Ravnos, no. And the jury's kind of out with the Noya. So what Absimilar does is that he approaches Erikil, Malkav, Bruja, and Cappadocius. And he says, I've got my elite band of assassins right here. You will not find better killers than this anywhere else in the world. And I've got a plan. You guys are getting pretty sick of King Enoch, right? You're getting pretty sick of the second generation, right? I've got a plan to kill them all. Absimiliard is the one who leads the charge in killing this the second generation. That's his plan. That's his mission that does that. Where, thanks to his leadership, he ends up sicking... Um, if I'm to take some inferences... Malkav and Erakil would go after King Enoch. It's, it's a nice little like brother sister bonding experience where you get to kill a king of a country, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think it's very and, wholesome. And Bruja or Choil, depending on chicken or the egg, who was alive around this time, we would go after Erat the Strong, and then the the student would surpass the master. Cappadocius doesn't really do anything because he's Cappadocius. He's fucking weird. And then Ventru would die a hero's death fighting who would kill him? I would guess Absimiliard would do that. But Absimiliard, while they're all fighting King Enoch and Irad, he immediately makes a beeline for Zilla. Just immediately goes for her. And corners her. And he enjoys beating her to death with his bare hands. Well, it is the best face. moment of his life. What? She fucked yeah, up his yeah, face. She, yeah, just for for one puncture mark. That was it. You fucked up that my was it. face. <laughs> so you can imagine Kane when he comes home after thinking, oh, the, um, the Bali and others are fucking around in the Middle East. Let me solve this issue. He comes back from the Bali wars with Solot and sees that happen. You can imagine just how pissed he is. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Uh, Pretty best. I would be. And yeah, the five of them scatter, and Malkav swears that Kane is going to come after him. Kane runs right past Malkav and immediately grabs Absimiliard by the throat. <laughs> and he throttles him into the air, and he says, You killed my children. I recognize that you're the ringleader behind this entire operation. I'm going to curse every last one of my quote-unquote grandkids, and you will have the worst out of all the deformities. He grips Absimiliard by his face and pumps as much evil energy and magic into him as possible and gives him this painful transformation in the span of seven seconds. Absimiliard drops to the ground, and now he looks like the Nosferatu that we know today. His bone structure has been forcibly warped. His skin has shriveled like a prune. His, organ his organs exploded after they filled with blood inside his body. He looks, smells, and sounds disgusting. That beauty that is gone forever. No amount of plastic surgery from the eldest can fix that. Yeah, that's a thing. If a, if a Zemichi uses vicissitude on a Nosferatu... Everything they do with no, uh, with the vicissitude is immediately undone. No, nothing they do with vicissitude is permanent on on Nosferatu. 
bonkers, right? <laughs> Pretty crazy. And, and if Absimilarid wasn't a petty evil bastard before, that warping changes him forever. He is now the worst person in Vampire the Masquerade, managing to out evil just about every character. He's he's just as bad as the worm. Just as bad as the worm, because he has a similar the world cannot live without my beautiful face. So I will destroy the world because it can't be allowed to exist without me being beautiful in it. That's his motivation. Are we supposed to fight him in Russia? You might. You might. Sounds like he needs a few bullets <laughs> Hopefully in the face. Hopefully not. Now, like, as much as I've built this guy up, this is, this is a hell of a fight. Does he even have a stat block? Let me see if he does. Well, that, that's He has an entry in the monster's wiki. If I put enough 45 into him, he'll he'll die eventually. Absimilar, do you have a step block? Uh, yeah, we have some stats that are incomplete. All right, you ready for this? Let's see. Charisma and manipulation, question mark. Oh. Appearance, zero. Um, his disciplines, animalism, 10. Dominate, 4. Presence five. That's Jesus. all we know. We're not told anything else. You want to know what animalism can do at high levels? Uh, turn Garrow. Yes. So behold, Garou, you can't fight Absimiliard because he can just immediately shut down that fight. <laughs> yeah. You gotta get a mage on this. Let's I've see, noticed what's, uh, that they. What's, that... What's, May just seem to be the consummate answer for anything that happens in the world of darkness. I'm talking about he can just stop, he can just summon the plague of locust from the Bible, and he could just use that as a discipline. So if you want to have your flesh eaten off by a pack of hungry bugs, he can do that with the snap of his fingers. What if he's not seeing me coming? He can't do anything then. So you gotta hope his presence is turned off, but at the same time, you can't see him because we don't know how powerful his obfuscate is. We still don't know the full grasp of, of that power. Y you might not you might not even be able to perceive him. Probably not. Or, yeah. And, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of fun stuff. So, yeah, absolutely avoid that man at all cost. <laughs> yes, indeed. Now, now, that's the fun story. There's one more story, and that's setting up the horror story of the, of the Tuku. Now, this is either before or after his curse. It's kind of up in the air. We have Mama Nosferatu. That's just what I'm going to refer to her as. She's just known as the Nameless Woman. Where she is a woman that Absimiliard, in all of his evil, ambushed, raped, and then embraced. Just for his own enjoyment. And when she woke up, miraculously, she did not have the blood bond. She was not bound to Absimiliard. So she escaped. Absimilarid was not prepared for her running. He sicked the Niktuku after her, and she miraculously escaped. So yeah, the the, the progenitor of the Nosferatu clan, that's her. And then she would eventually, I don't know why she would do this, started siring and embracing other Nosferatu. And that is where we get the modern day clan of the Nosferatu. There's one issue. The Niktuku are hunting down every single vampire that was embraced by her, which is every Nosferatu player character. So you have a personal boogeyman with the Nosferatu. You are being hunted by an ancient vampire race that is so abnormally beautiful, you are given the uncanny valley response when you see their faces, like Vasilisa. And some of them look like fucked up Cenobites, like Nakalvi, who is said to look like a half-man, half-wolf that has been flayed from head to toe and is constantly bleeding black, yellow, and red blood every time he takes a step. So you've got these absolute freaks coming after you. You don't know if they exist, but you are constantly looking over your shoulder, and every Nosratu in the clan wants to stress the point that there is something hunting after, the, after us. We don't know what it is. We can't get a read on it. But sleep with one eye open every time you go to sleep. Because we don't even know if they can come after us in day sleep or not. You are living in constant paranoia as Clan Nosferatu. But they prevail. Because where can you find the Nosferatu? 
everywhere, dude. Every city across the world has an Nosferatu in it. You want to know the history pages of this book? Um, now, our good friend Brian Campbell uh, wrote this. And Brian Campbell, as we know, wrote a ton of stuff for a werewolf. I'm referring to second edition Nosferatu. He wrote a ton of stuff for a werewolf. And he ended up writing this, the Nosferatu. And a lot of the points in the second edition Nosferatu book were written in first edition. So, really, you can just get either book, first or second edition. It's the same information. Um, I do like first edition a little bit more because the artwork is gross in that book. Because it's a lot of, like, photorealistic stuff of, like, garbage, banana peels, newspaper wadded up and thrown onto the floor. It makes you feel like you're crawling through the layer of a Nosferatu when you read that book. Mm, because of how, yeah. like, like, nasty it is. And... In second edition, it feels like you're reading some parts of um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre because it, they all look like the grandfather from that movie, with the shriveled face and the puckered lips. Yep, they look like that. <laughs> and speaking of, we have we have an Osiratu type called the Leatherface, but we're, let's put a pin in that for now. We'll come back to that. Yes. And what were the Osiratu involved in? Well, they have no real history to their names personally until we get into Africa, but name a historical event they were involved in it. Just uh, name a bit of history. The burning of the library of, of Alexandria? They were involved. Jesus. Ryan, what else were they involved in? Uh, Just I don't know. Anything. Uh, a anything. Uh, you said Jesus. Anything. Je <laughs> yeah. Jesus? They, they were... They they recorded the record uh, the movings around of um, Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth, yes, I can confirm that he was not a vampire. He was something else. We did just don't know what because mage is close, but it's not quite. He had to have been like him. the first imbued or something like that. Something like that. And well, the demon the fallen confirms that he was indeed the son of God. So there we go. Yeah, check yeah, sure. check out check out Demon the Fallen. It's a good game. I swear. I mean, and... we've yet to encounter a bad game in World of Darkness. Well, that's that's not true. There is there is Werewolf Fifth Edition. There there is Exalted too. Yes, not Exalted. Not, is weird. Yeah, not a fan. Not a fan. I mean, D and D. If you're having an adventure like that, you have to go off the D twenty system. The storyteller system just doesn't work for a fancy adventure like that. Yeah, because. When you're having that many combat encounters in a row and you're purposely overpowered like an Exalted, yeah, I'm not hating it because Justin and Chile made it. I'm hating it because it's just a bad game and concept. And I digress. Yep. The the thing I was trying to get you to say was Rome. Oh, Rome. Where, the, the Rome. Fall of Rome? Yeah, where just any part of Rome because, well, the, the Ventru and the Malkavians are just and their togas and their their little laurels walking around saying, "Ah, oh, Rome! So so happy we have Rome." I I have no idea what the Roman accent would sound like. I kind of want to do Italian. I don't know. Uh, who's that in our basement? Oh, who is that in our basement? And I look down at this the Nosferatu. Hey. And they say, "Uh, yeah, they say exactly that." And they're looking at them saying, "Um, could you get out of our house?" Uh, no. So, uh, well, if you're going to live here, you're, if you're going to squat here, you have to do something for us. What can you do? Uh, here's a scroll of 2,000 years of recorded history since the time of Samaria. Ah, here, Malkavians, take this. Okay, this will work. Um, what else can you do? Can you, you, you seem to be good at collecting information. Can you spy? Can you do some spy work? Uh, yes. Uh, Brutus is planning to, uh, Brutus is planning to have you assassinated. He's hired some, he's hired some Greeks that are going to come into the city on horseback. Uh, beware of a man calling himself Tartarus. Ah, and that that's how the Nosferatu earned their keep in just any society they come into. Even before Shreknet came around, there was nobody better at <clears throat> gathering information than the Nosferatu. Now you may be asking, what about the Malkavians? And that's because the Malkavians were still fucking crazy, and this was before the Great Prank was cast. 
So the Malkavians technically knew more, but didn't know how to express themselves. The Nosferatu, on the other hand, well, animalism uh, combined with obfuscate, I mean, really, that's all you need in order to collect information the way they did. But they have one more pres uh, one more discipline. We know what it is. One potence. So, unlike the Malkavians, the Nosferatu could fight if they were cornered, and they would kick the ass of anything that came their way. Don't corner the Nosferatu. You might think you've got them beat before you know it, they've already reached up, grabbed you by the throat, and then popped your head off like a zit. That's all. <laughs> They're fun. I'm really and... glad I took fortitude. And the thing is, now when somebody from the dark is hunting you, and your antiluvian hates you, you form a pretty close-knit community. And the Nosferatu were used to being treated like shit, and the people they would embrace at the time were people who were treated like shit. People that had leprosy, people who were Jewish, uh, people that were wanted criminals who had burnt down every sort of relationship they could have had and were penitent for it. The Nosferatu would take disenfranchised and bring them into a family. And this is where I come into saying there are a lot of old-timey references with the Nosferatu. This is a clan that is directly based off of movies and television series and books. Do you remember the Twilight Zone? Yes. TV series? Do you remember the, the episode Eye of the Beholder? That I don't actually remember, no. Yeah, this was... Uh, Ryan, did you ever watch the show? Uh, no. Ryan, it's um, it's uh, it's an episode. Bit uh, Big Joel did a video on this, and it's one of his like two good videos. But the point of that episode was that it's a woman that was in an accident where she's disfigured. She's going in to have plastic surgery, and then the plastic surgery fails, and she takes the wrapping off of her face, and she looks normal. And then all the surgeons around her. You see their faces, they look like pigs. Like pig-human hybrids when you look at them. And they tell her, oh no, you're too ugly to live in society. You need to go off and live with all the ugly people off in, off in the disenfranchised distance. But when the quote-unquote ugly people come to retrieve the woman, it's this guy with a kind voice that's saying, I'm here to bring you to a community that's going to love you, and you're going to be with your own kind, your own kind of people that have gone through the same life as you. And it's a place where you can just be yourself, and all the other surgeons around, and all the other uh, all the other pig people, are looking at it with somber eyes. Well, that just that just could be their faces, but that's the thing with an Osiratu. If you are the disenfranchised type, you're being brought into a community that you're going to look like shit. And some days, this Nosferatu are incredibly painful physically, but the Nosferatu love each other, dude. There are no disenfranchised amongst the Nosferatu. Everyone in Clan Nosferatu knows each other. Nobody goes under the radar. Everyone knows each other. And you get to feel like you're part of a family with the Nosferatu. That extends to the Camarilla, the Sabbat, the Anarchs, the Inkanu. They don't care so much about the factions. Because the Sabbat and the Camarilla Nosferatu, they're talking with each other. They're exchanging information. The clan comes before the faction. This is the only, only clan that does that. Yep. I, and... I respect them more for that. I'm reminded of the movie Freak, Skibble Gobble One of Us, We Accept Her One of Us. Which is another reference, because like Freaks, there is a reference to that movie. Did you see how that movie ends? I actually did not. I had a chance to, but I had to miss the class to watch it because I was studying for finals. All right, so spoiler for a movie that's almost well, 100 how old years movie? old. 90, year, 90 years old by this point? Yes. Um, That was too shocking for audiences back in its day, but super influential and nobody really knows just how influential it is. The whole point is that it's this sexy woman called Cle Cleopatra. Yeah, it took you a while to think of that name. Um who is dating this dwarf in a freak show for his money. And there's this whole, like, it looks like it's going to be like a romance movie. Like, the other female dwarf is upset that the male dwarf isn't giving her attention anymore. And then Cleopatra tries to kill the dwarf by poisoning his food. And once that's figured out, 
everyone in the freak show jumps Cleopatra. Now, there's also a comic book that was made in the 90s of this. And I think they did the scene better in the comics because this is like genuinely unsetting, unsettling how they set this up. Where Cleopatra is in the wagon and they lock the door behind her. And Dorf is saying, it's, it's not that you don't love me. It's not that you try to kill me. It's that you're not one of us and you will never be one of us. So we're going to make you one of us. And he's holding up a straight razor as he says this. And oh, Jesus. Yeah. And you don't get to see what happens to Cleopatra. She manages to escape and she comes out, and the webbing between her fingers down to her wrist have been cut and they're like hanging off like that. And she's already had like part of her cheeks and her eyelids flayed off. And she's running out to the street saying, Somebody help me, somebody help me. And right before a car gets to her, she's dragged off into the shadows and a strike of lightning. And by the time you see her again, the picture is too graphic for me to post on YouTube. <laughs> Good lord. But but what happens is that her legs are cut off by at the knee down. Her fingers are burnt and cut to the point where they look like duck feet. Her waistline is shredded. Her body is covered in tar, burnt partially, and then covered in feathers. Her eyelids are cut out. And then her cheeks and her jawbone are shredded to where her jaw is constantly hanging open. And her entire head is forced to be shaved and filled with feathers. And she's called the Magnificent Duck Woman and then forced to be part of the freak show. Where apparently she has like been beaten and traumatized so badly, she can no longer fully communicate. And that's how that story ends. That's fucking terrifying. Yeah, wh what a story, right? Yep. <laughs> so... Thus, we have the reference to the movie in this book, The Process of Cleopatra-ing. For the Nosferatu, as you can imagine, fucking hate the Toreador. Because why do you get to be sexy? Why do you get to be fawned over and we're treated like shit? It's not fair. I mean, after all, the Toreador don't do anything. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the Nosferatu <laughs> really have only the Niktuku to blame. <laughs> Exactly. This, this is why you can't get settled because you have to constantly be on the move because you may or may not be hunted. And they will take candidates that were going to be Toreador or beautiful narcissistic assholes and they will drag them down into the Warrens, beat them to death and then embrace them that way. And then when they come back they are the tangled, messed up Cleopatra Nosferatu. There's a template for one in the in second editions book, but we can't show the picture because our tits are hanging out. Bummer. Damn, but, no titties for us. Yeah, but that's that's one of the main types of Nosferatu out there. There's also the Leatherface, where that is a Nosferatu that doesn't like being ugly, so they become serial killers where they hunt beautiful people, flay their faces off, and then wear them as skin suits fun <laughs> yeah fucking terrifying it, you, the epic sons of the lambs reference where it rubs that's the your preset on its skin rubs it gets the holes again oh 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 <laughs> fucking crazy movie my, my mom can't sit through that movie because of just how fucking creepy buffalo bill is it, 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 it's genuinely an unsettling movie. It's probably one of the greatest yeah. psychological thrillers ever made. Next to, like, there's Psycho. A reason that there's a reason that won the big five Oscars. Best actor, best actress, best mm. screenplay, and so on and so forth. Yeah, it's, it's a brilliant movie. Just, yeah, and I don't think you'll ever be able to get a movie quite like that again. Probably how, not. Like, raw and disturbing it is. And... That's your preset character in the Nosferatu first edition book, by the way, is a leather face. Yep. And the last kind we're going to talk about is the Fagin, or the yes. Fagin, depending on how you pronounce his name. Yeah, they, uh, there's a you, very lovely looking picture here in the book of a Fagin. Yeah, you, you read the... What am I thinking of? Oliver Twist? I actually did not. They didn't make me read it in school. What, what page are you showing on screen, by the way? Uh, page 46. Page 46, you found the book? Yes, you sent me some of the pages. All right. It says, 
Yeah, page 46. This is in history pages, right? Yes. Yeah, page 46. I didn't send you page 46. Did you? No, it's in uh, it's in Rock of Brawl, I think. Rock of Brawl? Oh, okay, that's where I sent it. Okay. You just sent me some miscellaneous stuff that I didn't take notes on, but I have them. Uh, so, that might be page 56 with the, with the fucking glasses. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. The, the, the book, the artwork in second edition is fucking weird, dude. It's very Book of the Worm-like. It's freaky. But, I mean, this is the Nosferatu we're talking about, so to an extent, it makes sense. You you would swear from the looks of their faces that these would be wormish vampires? No, this is the furthest from the worm that you could get next to the Salubri. Well, it's only because, Um, like, the eldest uh, Nosferatu is actually, like, just a decent person. He's a piece of shit. And Baba Yaga did sign a double deal with the worm. Well, that was Baba Yaga. That was something entirely different. Yeah, there, there is some connection. And then she was put to death by Vasilisa for doing that. Yes. Uh, and... Everybody, go go listen to the song and watch the music video Baba Yaga by Slaughter to Prevail. It's awesome. And then watch John Wick after that. Why? And uh, Because he's called Baba Yaga in that movie. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he is. Now, now, Ryan, you read Oliver Twist, didn't you? Um... No, but I the, reference it quite frequently. Uh, so you remember I, the? No, I did, but I was really was when I was younger. Yes. So do you remember Fagin at all in that book? I think that's how you say his name. I think you put em- emphasis on the A. Um, no, uh, he, he, I only he was remember the, a few things from that book. Yeah, he, he he was the creepy old man that had the the th- the the, um, the thieves guild with the artful dodge dodger in it, and he oh. was kind of. Like he was like the okay. kid's handler, where he would tell them, you know, go out and steal this, and then the kids would do it, and then come back with the money, uh, or the food, or the clothing, and then give it to Fagin, and then he would dish it out between between the group. And he was, uh, he was a charming homeless man in Oliver and Company. But, yeah, you start having Nosferatu who do that, where the Nosferatu realize that they're, they would be really good as thieves, but... They could steal the stuff themselves, and they would just be Clan Ravnos by another name by that point. So they're going to get somebody to do it for them. So you've had historical events in Vampire of Nosferatu gaining control of an orphanage and then turning the orphans into thieves. And they would be known as Fagans. <laughs> That's pretty fucked up. It's a little charming, right? Yep. Well, I suppose... If the kids were to get wrapped up with a vampire, that was the best possible one you could be wrapped up with. I mean, Rather let's go down Fagan the last than a Sedite. Now, let's go down the, the the six other clans of the Camarilla and think what else would happen if you were met with them uh, as an orphanage. Um, the Bruja, you'd become NPCs that can't stop talking about politics, and eventually you die in a riot where you set yourself on fire, and then you emulate yourself over nothing. If anybody um, who's seen the riot scene from Fritz the Cat, that's the future that awaits them. You have the Gangrel, where, be- behold, you just set these kids off the adventure of the Jungle Book. Basically, yes. Only for them. To- and then the same Gangrel would then hunt and eat the kids as part of the most dangerous game. Um... The Torridor. Hopefully that's not a Torridor anti-tribute, but y- your kid is going to be full of shit, or they're going to be turned into a child slave if it's a Torridor. Um, the Ventru, uh, from a changing the dreaming perspective, no. <laughs> don't do not do that. Your kid is going to become incredibly benign or a psychopathic narcissist. Probably both. And then the Malkavians and the Tremere, we probably shouldn't go into detail with. No. Who wants to become a blood brother, dear children? Oh, good lord, no. <laughs> Not only are you going to be on Jeffrey Epstein's flight list, but you're also going to be a Nazi. Great, great. <laughs> that, that's the only way you can make either of those situations worse. <laughs> good lord. Well, what, what was that movie, The Zone of Interest, where mm. it's... um. Yeah, it's it's a it's a boring movie, but the subject matter is the only reason why anybody went to see it. I completely forgot. It's um, it's this family that's hanging out in a cottage that's right next to Auschwitz. So it's 
it's just like it's this family drama movie where you just hear the screams of the damned and dying the entire movie and they just treat it like it's normal and that's the horror of the movie so I mean, that just seems yeah, depressing yeah that's that's your average Tremere chantry <laughs> I've now, got to fucking write one for Appalachia. Uh, yeah, now, what, what, what wonderful people, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, what else is fun about the Nosferatu? Well, it's that the Nosferatu, like the Malkavians, called a lot of stuff that nobody paid attention to. But the Nosferatu didn't tell anybody about it. Because Nosferatu, for example, were hanging out in London right before the Black Plague started and said, hey, all this garbage on the street, it'll be... It'll be really unfortunate if a plague started because of all this garbage and all this rats and all the shit. Should we do something about it? No. No, just let it happen. For, forget about it. Let's just let it happen. Let's see what happens. The interesting thing I've noticed is most Nosferatu just hate regular humans. Yeah. I mean, after all, they treat them like shit. I mean, I look funny, and you're going to treat me like shit because of it. I mean, that, they are the fun, hard right? to look at. I can't really... Yeah. Yeah, if, if you've seen movies like M.A.S.K., it's a lot like that, where you're a nice person, you're a decent guy, but because you look like the fucking Freakazoid, people are going to treat you like shit, regardless. What was that one, where, like, 80s movie about the kid with the really fucked up face that gets, that goes that mask. Us... Oh, is that one? Is that it? Okay. Yeah, that's it. That was a really um, depressing movie. It's like abbreviated as, yeah, it's abbreviated as M.A.S.K., but yeah, like that. Same thing too, but like, I guess if you really like Carrie, you could wrap that in with Nosferatu. too. Um especially with potence. <laughs> oh yeah. Imagine going, to, imagine going to your school prom with that. Now what else is fun about the Nosferatu? Um uh, let's talk about the sewer system, where around the time they bring up the flushable toilet and how that was the best invention ever made, because it increased the demand for a better sewer system. So, behold, three renovations, the U.S. government and the European governments and the Asian governments are going to remodel their entire sewer system, and we get entirely new layers for free. We don't have to pay anybody to renovate this. So, behold, you want to know where to find the Nosferatu? Travel down your toilet. Just like Mario, go down the warp pipe. Eventually, you'll find the Nosferatu at the bottom. Blue, blue, blue. It's like, it's a lot like the Skaven from, 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 40K. Uh, from Warhammer. Where, although they're not in 40k, they're in fantasy. Oh, yeah. I, I, I wish they were in 40k. Where every city has the Ratkin beneath it. Like, every major metropolitan city has the Nosferatu beneath it. Everywhere you step, you're right You're right above the layer of a Nosferatu. And same with, a Nosferatu, same with any vampire clan, really. You can never be sure if you got them all. Because, once again, obfuscate animalism perfect at gathering information. You can't quite get them all because they know that you're coming after them and they've been preparing for the Nittuku for years. You're nothing compared to the Nittuku. <laughs> yep. Now the, there's one more bit of history. Now all of you belly acres out there, all of you Marxists that say, well, what about Africa? Why, why isn't there anything about Africa and World of Darkness? We're getting to it. We haven't talked that much about the the Libon, have we? We have not. No. Nope. Where the Libon are a lot like the African Camarilla mixed with Anarchs. They're a loose coalition of vampires that will help each other out, namely just to push back European and Chinese colonialism. That's what they'll do. And the ones who lead them, get ready for this are the Nosferatu that lead them. Yeah, surprise, surprise, right? I mean, it seems what, to work. A, a, a low clan ra rises up and becomes the leader. They are known as the Guru He in Africa, and they have a sick-looking clan uh, icon. Yeah, let me see if I can get this to you. Let's see. Here you go, in history pages. That's Same the fucking again. strangulation picture again. What the fuck is going on with Wikia? No, you just oh, gotta you this. just gotta command you just gotta command C command V better. Oh, that does look it. sick though. Yeah, yeah, that look, you can see the head. That looks like a, like a like a super villain's icon when you look at that. Mm. MF Doom. That looks like a snake. It, it does. A look bit, like a yeah. snake. <laughs> <laughs>
God damn it. <laughs> now, now, Satites, why couldn't you have made this your icon? Now, well, really, like, the clan the clan icons in the Liabon book are just sick as hell in general, because the, the Bruja one is this, um, it's two people holding, it's two fists that are holding knives, and it looks sick as fuck, but we'll talk about the Liabon when we eventually do an episode on Africa. Now, the thing is, how did the Nosferatu rise to power in Africa? Well, we get to talk about the yield and history of Setites versus Asamites. Now, the Nosferatu were sitting in North Africa around this time, eating popcorn, watching the Silent Striders fight the, the Setites. And they thought, hey, this is pretty cool. And they were just watching it happen. They didn't participate in the fight whatsoever. Set didn't curse them. I mean, there's not much more you could do to Nosferatu to make their lives worse. Yeah. And when the Setites... When Set died, and then the curse happened that drove out all the Silent Striders, the Nosferatu realized, hey, wait a minute. That lands up for grabs. And they all poured into Egypt, and then looked behind them, and the Gangrel were chasing after them. And thought, hey, what the fuck, where are you doing? Oh, we're just, we, do, we want to go to Africa, because all the cool animals are down there. Okay, you're not going to try to kill us, right? No? Oh, okay, good, follow us. And they, them and the Gangrel start running down the Nile River, and then look behind them, and there's the Asamites. And they think, hey, mom, wait a minute, what are you doing? Oh, you know, um, it's part of our duty to go and spread um, the the good news of Hakim about fuck other vampires. Uh, not us, right? Oh, oh, no, not you, not you. You haven't done anything to offend us. Okay, um, so... You you stay at the back of the line. Gangrel in the middle. We go first. We're going to go down the Nile River together. And so they do. And the Asamites do stay behind in Egypt just to make sure the Setites don't stay in Egypt. They chase them out. And the Nosferatu and Gangrel travel all the way to west to East Africa and look around and say, this is perfect. No other clan is down here. Free real estate, right? Yep. And behold... The Nosferatu and Gangrel spread like wildfire. No Nick Tuku's going to find us down here because they're all hanging out in Europe where all the fun uh, where all the fun history is happening. Nobody gives a damn about African history. I mean, we did a whole Africa segment when I was in middle school. Yep. We learned a lot, a lot about the geography, not that much about history. Yeah. Well, I learned a bit I, about like Mansa Musa and that sort of thing. But, yeah, the, the Mali Empire. Yeah, but we didn't and learn much about the... Ethiopia, which is weird because Ethiopia existed for centuries. Yeah, in Ethiopia, that that was about that's a badass people too. They they pushed back against colonization. Yeah, during that time, like three or four times. That's the, that was the one country that managed to pull that off. Yep, and you also had Shaka Zulu and the Moroccan Empire and the Kingdom of Ghana and everything going on in Gambia. I before this episode, I ended up pulling up a lecture on the spread of Islam in West and East Africa, and there's a debate that Islam itself, as an organized religion, started in East Africa rather than the Arabian Peninsula, because a lot of people that wanted to go and preach about Islam were being chased out by pagans in the Arabian Peninsula. There was no such pushback in West Africa and in East Africa. So you had um, all these different Islamic missionaries going around and the schools were Arabic. If you wanted to learn, you had to speak Arabic. If you wanted access to the medical textbooks, you had to speak Arabic. The, the, the Muslims were doing eye surgery in the year 900, getting rid of cataracts. That's how advanced they were. In comparison to Europe, where oh, just put a leech on you and maybe it will fix you. Fingers crossed, right? Yep. So, if you wanted your country to thrive, you had to go through the mosque and Islam if you wanted that to happen. Now, no empire ended up forming from that because everybody wants to be on top, and then you had to worry about China trying to take over, and then colonization happened. And no empire of massive size got to form. And you had Ethiopia, but that's it, really. I mean, there, there is... um, the, Everybody wants to look at Africa and say, oh, this is just 
the shithole country where nothing ever formed. No, there was stuff there, but it never got the chance to bloom the same way that Europe did because Europe had the Roman Empire and everybody co in Europe copied the homework of the Roman Empire. Same yeah. thing with Asia. Everybody just copied what India and China was doing. So there was no homework to copy in Africa. So without the sharing of notes, you didn't get to have their own version of the Roman Empire or the Chinese dynasty. Where odd, but it sucks. Well, they had sucks. Egypt. They had Mali. They had Carthage for a yeah. while as well. Yeah. yeah and like Central all, Africa didn't really those... have that. And each one of those end up getting fucked up by some sort of European empire. Yep. Yeah. And there was a Swahili <laughs> as well. So, yeah. So it's interesting to think about like, what if there was an empire of that size in Africa that bloomed the same way that the Roman Empire did? And what would the world look like today? I think it would have looked vastly different. Yeah. Uh, fun alternate history channels. And looking along the lines, the Nosferatu had a little empire like that, where in the shadows, they ran Africa. Everything that went on in Africa, nothing happened there without their, their say-so. And the Gangrel were just off doing their own thing, because the Gangrel, being the freaks of nature that they are, want to run with the zebras and the elephants and the lions and the snakes and the monkeys and just have a fun time being in nature. And you can't get more natural than Africa, because holy schmoly, the environments you, you can get, you find in Africa. Yep. It's and one of the, the most biologically the diverse places on Earth. And all the dangerous wildlife that was to kill you. Yep. Or ecologically <laughs> well, diverse. Yeah, yeah, Colin, right? I sent you that picture of the um, the lioness that climbed the tree and got in a fight with the with the leopard. I do yeah. remember that. Yeah. And they and these two idiots end up snapping the tree branch they were on and then fell fifty feet and then were completely fine when they hit the floor. Yeah, just just like a cat, you land on your feet and then immediately run off. Yep. They did not see that coming. Yeah, and this was like the the pachyderms too, where the imagine the gangrel getting their hands on the the elephants, the hippos, and the rhinoceros. Jesus, and Christ. ghouling those. Uh, bro, <laughs> hippos are already fucking yeah. scary. Very yeah, territorial. So, so there you go. You have your African gangrel and African Nosferatu with the ghouled hippo. <laughs> All I can see is like just Colt standing on the back of a hippo with an M14 and a bandana around his head. And you command it to charge it and knocks over somebody's Jeep. Today's a real good fucking day. <laughs> and if you give it enough blood, it might develop a discipline. Behold, fucking hippo, hippo with fortitude. The world will never survive. Hippo with, no, hippo with Chimera Street. <laughs> 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 what, what, what kind of illusion would a hippo make? Uh, uh, <laughs> big Displacer Beast from D&D. Probably. <laughs> if you could read the minds of animals, what would they think? Mm. And Food. So when the Ventru and Toreador finally get to Africa... They think, oh, we oui, we oui, oui, the Africa, all the natural resources we get to exploit. Oh, who the fuck is this? The Zenosuratu? Bullshit! How did you get here? And the uh, Nosuratu you say, we just, yep, we followed the Nile River. Followed the Nile, and now we're here. Hi. Yep. You snooze, you lose, loser. <laughs> oh, by the way, there's and... Gangrel over there. Have fun. So with everything that happened with colonization. The Ventru and Toreador only profited off of that, and other nations only profited off of that, because Nosferatu saw that there was money to be made in the slave trade. They were probably fine with that, because, yeah, the thing with the slave trade, Europe didn't invent that. That's, that's been a concept of, like, enforcing your will onto another person that can't do anything against you. Slavery is not a unique concept. That's been, yeah, slavery's been a thing since the yeah. dawn of civilization. Yeah. Though they did make a good business out of it. Yeah, of so, exploitation. It's, it's, it's thick and twisted as that is to say. <laughs> yeah. It was now, in every, every empire. Thing, and the Nosferatu end up getting all the money off that, and were uh, they were p handing out the money from that to the Venture and Toreador so they could get their start of the Camarilla. And they said, hey, would you like to join the Camarilla? And they said, oh no, we've already got a thing. It's called the Liabon. 
We already have our own association of vampires down here. We don't need the Camarilla. The Nosferatu were sitting pretty, and the Camarilla had to approach them for business deals in Africa. And the, everything was fine. They were getting the, the Ventru and Toreador to kiss their asses, and they kept saying, hey, can we introduce Christianity? Can we, can we make Christianity a thing here? And the Nosferatu told them to fuck off. And all was fine until the Jihad started with Islam. And behold, the best way to spread your religion is to go to war. And once that happened, the Nosferatu said, uh, yeah, that Christianity thing, can you please start implementing that, please? <laughs> they started to have to drag the Ventru and the Torador into Africa just to get them to start doing this again. And of course, the Ventru and Torador, you give them a, an inch, they take a mile, they start enforcing the whole Western superiority. Uh, you, get you get spanked or slapped on the wrist if you speak your tribal language in school. Um, that kind of shit happens. And yeah, the, the Ventru and Torador aren't exactly nice people. Uh, blue We've bloods and aristocrats. Through the fact that the wait, do we did talk about Ventru in the past, didn't we? We have not done a Ventru episode, but we've brought up some of the, the clan dickishness. Yeah, yeah. And the Nosferatu are still in charge, and the Gangrel are off doing their own thing. And now they have to keep an eye on the Asimites, who used to be cool and now have seemingly collectively lost their damn minds. Warfare. Yep. Yeah. So, so, if you were to make a chronicle in Africa, thanks to current events and French and American corporations losing everything, thanks to the West African crisis, and one Russia coming in and filling the power vacuum, and all of these countries having civil wars and coups based around, say, wanting to do business with Russia or becoming an Islamic state, you have got so much inspiration to do for an African campaign. So much stuff can happen down here. You want to talk about the Algerian Civil War? Because that could be a game in and of itself. Because from 1965 to 2003, you've got an entire country that goes to shit thanks to the argument of, should we be Islamic or should we be communist? There's no winner in this debate. No. Well, so... Nope, everyone loses, and the civilians especially do. And yeah, you could say it's a little bit gross to take tragedy and history and turn it into a game, but dog, that's already been a thing with Vampire. That's that's the thing with other media, too. You, that's the you point of historical take, fantasy. Yeah, you should take events like this and fantasize them in order to bring awareness and discussion to these stories. No, don't be exploitative. Don't do it just to take a shock value. But do it because it's history. It deserves to be talked about in any shape or form. Yes, and it, it'll be very, it would be fun to run a, a campaign in Africa. I just need to get something going because dog Africa is fucking huge. There are so many languages and subcultures in Africa. It is hard to narrow it down to one game because you you can really do anything. I think it might be easier to do a fairer game with with um with Africa instead. Probably. With, with the changing breeds and our good friends the red talons <laughs> dibs on the corax um you also have the bonars there too that's true and and really the nosferatu are doing okay for themselves i mean this this is the clan that is started at zero and has kind of sort of stayed there but they found a way to be happy in misery where yeah, the, the Nosferatu are pretty cool vampires, and you might be thinking, well, this is kind of anecdotal for history. It's that way in the book, too, where the Nosferatu are the number twos to everything that happens in history. Every event that has happened in Vampire the Masquerade, there was a Nosferatu off to the side watching it happen. Um, debatable in India and China, where that's the lowest concentration of Nosferatu, but Everywhere else in the world, there was a Nosferatu. Everywhere. And no matter how hard you try, Grim, you will not be able to find them all. God damn it. Yep. I mean, yeah, that's, why I got, them all. that's why I gotta get my uh, sense of smell up there. Exactly. Oh, for they, me, it's like... Now they all... Good. They all have a different smell. Every Nosferatu smells different. This one smells like rotten eggs. This one smells like body odor and gym socks. I mean, that's not going to stop me. 
That's part of the reason that whenever I visit Mackie, I always bring him beer and cigars. The cigars cuts down on the smell. And I was writing a that... little short story about like my my vampire character post the events of the game we ran, um, fleeing from some bone nars who are trying to kill him for some cheaper now, and, and him being narrowly saved by an Osferatu, and the two become friends. That's just a short little thing Insane. I was writing. Same thing with our character in the thumbnail. That that was the character I had in Las Vegas by Night, the game that I ran that you will never see, Devi. And she was really fun to play as. I I kind of wish she survived the events of the games, but thanks to poor Wolves, she died fighting a bunch of Ratkin with you. Where you remember her shtick, right? Because she spent into um heavily into obfuscate and animalism. Yep. And she had the the birds of prey that were named after the the members of Led Zeppelin. And you'd be in the middle of a scene and then you would look up and see that one of her birds is perched somewhere. And you know that birds spy on you. And then it flies off in the middle of the scene and then reports back to Devi. And that's how she's able to keep up to date with everything that goes on the, in the campaign. Yep. And And then when you meet her, she can hold her own in a fight to an extent. Granted, she did get overrun, and my roles end up fucking up, but she had a level in potence, and could lay... did manage to knock one of the Ratkin onto their back before she got overrun. Yeah. So... Poor Devi. Yeah, she, she did a base, too. I, I gotta bring her back in some way, shape, or form. But, <clears throat> when we eventually go back to America in our, in our Werewolf and World Darkness games, I might bring her back. Fair. Considering... Concerned we got a new storyline going with 3.5. Yeah. New, and, you know, after I, I do... I hear the throat being cleared. After I do Appalachia... Sorry I, about that. I thought I was muted. So good. <laughs> after we do Appalachia, I was planning on running the vampire game that I initially intended to run, which was going to be Miami by night, so... I, I'm i either going to use Nozomi or Devi for that game. Oh, Christ the fuck, bastard. <laughs> He's back and fairer than ever. He's a prick. <laughs> and I wonder if I should give him vicissitude just because he's got all the flesh to play with. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, think about it. <laughs> no. All that vicissitude, give your fat ass some liposuction. See, well, there's a... Um, Neither of you have watched Tin Hotenge, have you? I have not. No. No. Because there's a character in that where it's used for fetish fuel, but she is this morbidly obese martial artist that's able to take her fat and compress it into her body, and she ends up turning herself into a bag of holding where she's got all these different knives and swords that she's seemingly just pulling out of her skin with that power. That's kind of funny. It's kind of like... she has um... the whole... And then she has the weight gain fetish scene that everybody jerks off to. Great. Yeah. <laughs> it, the anime was sus as fuck. <laughs> yeah, don't say. Good lord. I I don't think I want him to know. <laughs> nope. That that, that, that that anime does kind of suck, but it is, the, it is the one anime I can think of that has a black main character in it, come to think of it. So, what yeah. about... Good. Well, but what? What about that, uh, Afro Samurai? The boondocks Samurai? doesn't count. No, uh, I said Afro well, Samurai. Well, well, yeah, Afro Samurai, but so yeah, that's one. But that kind of thing, but there isn't that many. Damn, all right. Um, let's see here. Ryan, let's talk about Upfuscate. Let's talk one about... second. Uh, my roommate's talking to me real quick. Your roommate? Oh, no. Let's see, oh, that's freaky. Was it? See, we would is? like to interrupt this. We would like to interrupt this episode to bring you something I found off of Newgrounds.com while I was waiting for Ryan to get something done. Oh dear lord! So, so I just found this. The hell is that? Oh, come to think of it, come to think of it, this reminds me of something with the Nosferatu. What's that? Uh, they will make they will make art. They're sculptors. They like to express themselves by taking random shit they see off the street. And then they will collect it and make modern art and mosaics out of it. They have the whole that they have the coat hanger sculpture hanging in their in their layers off the ceiling, and that's just stuff they do. They'll just take 
junk and make it beautiful. Where once again, that's one of the core themes of Nosferatu. I am back. Um, Sorry. Along with it, one more thing I forgot to mention: spawning pools. Now, this is a fun little practice, right? So here we go, Grim. I'd like to ocean over into my giant puddle of blood that I keep in my sewer. You see it, right? It smells great, right? Now, uh, yes. If I had a now, functioning now check it out. stomach, got... I would throw up. Now check it out. We've got this house cat. I'm going to throw this cat into the pool of blood, and there it goes. I give it a minute, it's going to come out. Awesome. See? It comes out, and thanks to being fully submerged in my blood, it is now fully under my control. Well, that's how the, the blood... That's, right. how, <laughs> that's how the spawning pools work. They will make pools of blood, purposefully drown animals in it, and they will come out as ghouled animals that are fully under the Nosferatu's control. And Look they're still my... alive. Yeah. All I had to do to ghoul my dog was spit on a piece of beef jerky and give it to him. Okay. Yeah, but the they do it for mass producing ghouls because a fun thing they do is that they'll take like hot like spider nests and beehives and will just dunk them into the pools. And behold, that's an entire colony of bees that's not under your control. So, Are like certain you bees to... venomous? Or poisonous? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, yeah, venomous as fuck. You talk about the Japanese murder hornet, the one that looks like it's wearing a mask. Yes. And behold, so you, the you, theoretically, the, sorry. theoretically, theoretically, all you need to do is uh, control the queen, and then you've already got the whole hive. Exactly. So the Nosferatu, if you want to do the not the bees scene, you can do that with Nosferatu, and you don't bleed. So there's no nothing to be concerned about if you get stung, because you won't feel it, and it won't kill you. So you can have a Nosferatu walking around with his ribcage hollowed out and a bunch of beehives stuffed into it. You can be Candyman from, from, from Candyman. That's fucking terrifying, because I hate wasps. Is, exactly. You can do some freaky-ass shit with a Nosferatu, dude. I kind of want to play <laughs> one now. See this because uh, this is what I was thinking about playing them the first time because you can get so creative with how f creepy you want to be with the Nosferatu, and of course we know what they're inspired off of the Nosferatu movie. Yep. Where? Yeah. Oh, that's one more thing I forgot to mention. Shreknet. I forgot to mention that. Um, so the Nosferatu movie comes out, and like Bram Stoker's Dracula, Dracula the Zemichi comes in, gets Bram Stoker to write this fake autobiography that whitewashes the entirety of Zemichi history, along with giving the public a false perception as to what vampires can do. They don't mention the fun stuff like vicissitude. So, when Nosferatu becomes a movie, it is a dishonest reflection as to what the Nosferatu can do. There's no obfuscate, there's no potence, there's no animalism in that movie. So, the Nosferatu say... If somebody encounters us, they will have no idea what they can, what we can do, unless another vampire already knew about that and told them what that we could do. It was perfect camouflage. You're hiding in plain sight, and in honor of Max Shrek, Max Shrek, who played the Nosferatu in question, they, when the internet gets invented, create Shreknet, this gigantic archive of information in the deep web that only the Nosferatu knew about where every Nosferatu was in contact with each other. You no longer had to send snail mail or an animal messenger. Everyone in the clan talked with each other. And then Justin and Chile threw that plot point out the window with the second inquisition, hacking into Shreknet, DDoSing it, and destroying the site. So, so until then, it was an awesome plot point. Yep. Because we have... um. We have a friend of the show, Gary, and I wish he was a part of the server, but he's too reclusive to do that. I asked him if he makes a vampire character, who would he go for? And he said the kind of vampire he'd be IRL, Nosferatu, because that kind of is Gary, that kind of is Gary's life by this point. He he's always online. He he works. Uh, he goes out and he does work and goes out and gets his groceries. But besides that, he's in his house all day on on the computer, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's how he knows all the shit that he knows, and 
it's thanks to that with his internet savviness that I'm able to have great conversations with him. Yeah, Gary is and, lethally intelligent. Yeah, and you remember when we played D&D that he made the power builds and he was fantastic at roleplay. Incredible yeah. at it. I fucking yeah, so much so Dusty I, Comets was but, such an incredible character. And before that was misfortune and I couldn't let that character die. I had to bring her back for two other campaigns. She would <laughs> At the, he's just too fucking good at making characters. You on top of he took a character from Toonstruck that had three scenes, and that was about it. A, a couple of like three minutes of screen time, and made her and like he a world-ending force. Yeah, and made her the goddess of fate in our Greyhawk game. I fucking love that. And, on top of that. If you see like an odd misfortune goddess picture on the internet, uh, he's the reason that it that exists. And uh fun times we'll have more have by all, but Neil before that, Gary. You and you and Fox don't want to be part of the server, and I feel like we're missing out on that because I would love for Shani Shani uh Rep Red Victor and Eden and King of Breed to meet you. Yeah, but, they'd you know, love you guys. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I think I think that's it with the Nosferatu. I think we got everything this time. So now we can go into op- an, an obfuscate. Yes. Obfuscate. <clears throat> obfuscate. All right. Now, I take it you just want me to go to the fifth. Um... Yeah. Yeah, because sixth, sixth and beyond, that stuff that you will probably never see in a game. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to start off with Cloak of Shadows. Uh, at this level, the vampire must rely on nearby shadows t- and cover to assist in hiding his presence. He s- they step easy into, enough, yeah, uh, pretty easy. They step into a, an out of the way shadowed place and ease themselves from normal sight. The vampire remains unnoticed as long as he stays silent, still under some degree of cover such as a curtain, bush, door frame, lamppost, or alley, and out of direct light lighting. The immortal's concealment vanishes if it if they move, attack, or fall under direct light. Furthermore, the vampire's deception cannot stand up to concentrated observation without fading. Uh, no oh. role is required uh, as long as the character fulfills the criteria above. So long as they remain quiet and motionless, virtually no one but another Kidron with a high enough aspect rating will see them. Keep in mind, this can just turn on when you feel like it. No blood point? Nope. Depends on our GM, though, because Danston wants you to spend a blood point to activate this, and at last for a scene, but I don't rule like that. I'm going to say, if you have this, you can just turn on, so just go ahead, step into that shadow, and then you're gone. And just um, don't move. Pretty much the Gloomstalker Ranger from D&D. Yeah. So, this is already really strong. I mean, you basically gave yourself a drop on any mortal that comes your way. But then it gets even better. With unseen Behold. presence. Yeah, th- now we start getting crazy. With experience, the vampire can move around without being seen. Shadows seem to shift to cover him, or them, and people automatically avert their gazes as they pass by. Others move unconsciously to avoid contact with a dark, with a cloaked creature. Mm-hmm. Those with weak wills may even scurry away from the area in un- unacknowledgeable fear. The vampire remains ignored indefinitely unless someone deliberately seeks them out or they inadvertently reveal themselves. Since the vampire fully retains their uh, physical substance, they must be careful to avoid contact with anything that may disclose their presence, knocking over a vase or bumping into someone. Even a whispered word or the scuffing of a shoe against the floor can be enough to disrupt the power. Oh, that's rough. Mm-hmm. Uh, no yeah, role is... Be careful. Yeah. Uh, no role is necessary to use the power unless the character speaks, attacks, or otherwise draws an attention to himself. The story teller should call for a wit stealth roll under any circumstances that might cause the character to reveal themselves. Difficulty of the roll depends on the situation. 
Stepping on a squeaky floorboard might be a five, while walking through a pool of water may require a nine. Other acts may require a certain number of successes. Speaking quietly without giving away one's positions, for instance, demands at least three successes. Upon success, the vampire and all their clothing and objects that could fit into a pocket are concealed. Nice. Uh, so it's the same power, but better. Yes. But better, yeah. And it's only going to get better from here. Behold, the level three. <clears throat> Mask of a Thousand Faces. Uh, what was that? Oh. Down Mask of a Thousand well, well, guess from the name what it does. Uh, it's probably like a certain book I made. Uh, the I'm guessing you could change your face. Like a you disguise my face. You, you, did, you did a whole bit from um, the Dave Chappelle show, and you say, who's that? You want to see my face? Hey, you rip off your skin. Isn't <laughs> there a Ragabash gift that's kind of like this that, Rag, or yes. that Reynard used? Yes. Hmm. Where... All right. What was that? You, you start seeing a face that is not your face. That's what this does. So the... you'll be looking right at a Nosferatu, and behold, your ugliness issue, that's now solved. Because if you succeed your role, you got to receive the role or it's going to be a masquerade breach. You now look like whatever you want or whatever the person thinks they're seeing. Yeah. So if you could re the system. The player role's manipulation performance, difficulty seven, to determine how well the disguise works. If the character tries to impersonate someone, they must get a good look at the subject before putting on the mask. The storyteller may raise the difficulty if the character catches only a glimpse. The chart below lists the degrees of success in manufacturing another appearance. Vampire, uh, vampires wishing to mask themselves as a person more attractive than they are must pay additional blood points equal to the difference between the vampire's appearance rating and the appearance of the mask. Which means that younger vampires may need to take longer in order to spend the blood necessary. One success, the vampire retains the same height and build with only a few slight alter uh, alterations to their basic features. Uh, they can appear as normal, albeit ugly, mortals. Two successes, they look unlike themselves. People don't easily recognize them or agree about their appearance. Three uh, successes is the neutral. They look how they want to look. Uh -huh. Four, uh, complete transformation, including gestures, mannerisms, appearance, and voice. Five successes, a profound alteration, appearing... Uh, as the opposite sex, a vastly different age, or an extreme change of size. Uh, actually, posing as someone else carries its own problems. So, Kyle. Yes. What ideas are going to your head with this power? Well, I mean, first of all, this means, you know, if you need to, you can fucking just walk out into the street. But second of all, like, if you're... If you're being hunted by something, be it, you know, uh, hunters, werewolves, or other vampires, like, say, it, what's even better about that is if one of your party members is a gangrel, and you share two disciplines with them, what you can do is you can disguise yourself like them, and then sort of, like, lead them away from, uh, it split, they're sort of just, like, split them up in order to give both of you a better chance to survive. They won't know which one of you is the real you. Exactly. So, this is a power that's strong in isolation, but if you want to use this in your coterie, you can do some crazy combinations with it. Crazy I mean, after good. all, if you're doing assassinations, this would be perfect for setting up a kill. I mean, after all, the Asimites love using this power, too. And, well, we know nobody kills better than the Asimites. The Asimites are still based. Yeah. So... Combine the Asimites with the with the Nosferatu, and behold, <laughs> you the have the A team. Network. You have the A team. You don't even need the other two guys. You just got these two, and that's it. 
So what is the level four? Level four is vanished from the mind's eye. <clears throat> this potent expression of obs, uh, obs, Jesus Christ, obs, uh, obs, 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 <laughs> Why do you guys use such sophisticated language for? Right. <laughs> Keep it simple. God damn. Enables the vampire to disappear from plain view. So profound is this vanishing that the immortal can fade away even if they stand directly in front of someone. While the disappearance itself is quite subtle, its impact on those who see it is anything but. Most kind of panic and flee in the aftermath. I'm supposed to say, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to say most kin. Yeah, I think so. We might have a typo. Uh, especially weak willed individuals wipe the memory of the kindred from their minds. Although vampires are not so easily shaken, even kindred may be momentarily surprised by a sudden vanishing. Yeah, the player rolls charisma and stealth. The difficulty equals the target's wits and alertness, usually the highest total in the group if the character disappears in front of a crowd. With three or few successes, the character fades but does not vanish, becoming an indistinct ghost-like figure. With more than three, they disappear completely. If the uh, the player scores more successes than a an ob observer's willpower rating, that person forgets that the vampire was there in the first place. Jesus Christ! Right, right. Tracking the character accurately while he appears ghost-like requires a perception alertness roll difficulty eight. A successful role means the individual can interact normally with the vampire, although the Kidron looks like a profoundly disturbing ghostly shape. A failed role uh, results in a plus two difficulty modifier, maximum of 10, when attempting to act upon or interact with the vampire. The storyteller may call for new observation checks if the vampire moves to an environment in which he's difficult to see, heads into shadows, crosses behind an obstacle, or proceeds through a crowd. When fully invisible, the vampire is handled as uh, described under unseen presence above. <clears throat> so, what was that? The third or second? Second so, um, level. Yep. So, behold. <laughs> you can see how fucking crazy this can get, right? Yeah. That's just fucking wild. Yep. Yeah, I think so. a Nosferatu playthrough is becoming more and more viable as time goes on. Where... <laughs> so, yeah, you can see how incredibly difficult it is to get your hands on the Nosferatu. Because they didn't invent it, but they perfected it, and nobody can obfuscate better than them. Nope. Yeah. So, well, we have to. Masters uh, of the Shadows. We, all of them. Do we have another ability to go through? Uh, one more. Cloak of the Gathering. Let's do it. Uh, at this degree of power, the vampire may extend their concealing abilities to cover an area. The Immortal may use any obfuscate power upon those nearby as well as themselves, if they wish. Uh, any protected person who compromises the cloak exposes themselves to, to view. Further, if the one who invokes the power gives himself away, the cloak falls from everyone. This power is particularly useful if the vampire needs to bring his re retinue through a secure location without drawing attention to others. Without drawing the notice of others. I don't know why I fucking changed that sentence. The Character may conceal uh, one extra individual for each dot of stealth he, they possess. They may bestow a single obfuscate power at a given time to the group, while the power applies to everyone under the cloak's character's cloak. His player need only make a single roll. Each individual must follow the requirements described under the relevant. Uh, obfuscate power. I keep fucking up that word. To remain under its effects. Any person who fails to do so loses the cloak's protection, but doesn't expose the others. 
Only if the mm-hmm. vampire themselves uh, errors does the power drop from everyone else. Hmm. Ha! So you just have so just the like chaos. A the barrier. Chaos you can start with this. A barrier of stealth. It, it's like passing exactly. out a trace, but so much better. Now, now you could use this the the typical way. You can use this to get your entire party out of a jam, or you can cause absolute havoc by turning a bunch of people invisible around you. That would be I mean, kind of neat, regardless. So yeah. Cu- Kyle, if you were to spontaneously become invisible where just nobody could see you, how upset would you be? I'd probably go fucking insane. Let's see. <laughs> like, so I, can see I, that I hate being could be, ignored, so... They, they could be very nasty people if they want. Yes. But they choose to keep to themselves. And I guess that makes them good people by default. A little bit. Whenever it meets a Malkavian, they can just make the veil breach by just turning civilians invisible. I mean, after all, but also, um, the Malkavians have this discipline, do, don't they? Do they? Do yeah. They obs- do they have obfuscate? Yeah, 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 I'm obfuscate. Oof. That's rough. And behold, um, them, the Asimites, the Malkavians, and the Setites all have this. And they use them for vastly different reasons, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, um, while that Setite is invisible in the women's bathroom, jerking off in the corner, there's another Nosferatu who's in the t- who's in the sink with a periscope spying on him. Spy versus he spy. In- he thinks he's hiding it, but I've got this entire incriminating video from now. <laughs> yes. That's a stupid idea. <laughs> but, All right. What's a what's a fucking world of impending doom at all hours of the day if it's not a little fun? Yeah. Exactly. You gotta enjoy the gallows humor. Yes. Because uh, like after all, you talk to anybody who's in the military and like gallows humor is how they get through some of the shit. Yep. When faced with certain death and destruction at every turn, the least you can do is have a laugh. Right. Let's talk about relationships now. Yes. Now, so. I have sent you the pages from 2nd edition. I will be reading off of first for this. Yes. Uh, I do want to go through and read this in the voice of, of my Nosferatu that I'm going to build Mickey. Just because I really like doing the Nosferatu voice. They, they've got an incredible <laughs> sense of humor about them, which I really like. Um. So for the relationships, I'll start with just talking about the Camarilla and I'll do it in the um, I'll do it in the voice of Mickey. Is this thing still on? Good. Here's the story you want. The masquerade hides six families of vampire and Camarilla society. The little conspiracy we've been maintaining for the last 500 years. Yeah, yeah, I've read your damn novels and you don't know shit about vampires. I wouldn't use those books to wipe my ass. Killing humans on stage in Paris, vampire rock stars. What the hell were you thinking? I don't usually deal with humans, mainly because I hate your kind so much. That's why we've got the Camarilla. We don't want to deal with humans at all, so we've got this epic society to keep us distracted from human concerns. Actually, the other vampires like to treat it like it's a big social event, but just you wait. When the shit hits the fan, the pretty vampires you write about are going to be the first ones to hit the rotating blades. Of course, some kindred claim that we actually manipulate every aspect of human society. Don't believe it. It's all bullshit. Me, I got nothing but contempt for your race, and I'd prefer to have nothing to do with it. That's why my kind are called sewer rats. We live in the midst of your society and thoroughly infiltrate it, but we stay hidden the entire time. Oh yeah, and like rats... We don't mind shitting where we live. I like uh, that is that doesn't have a whole lot to do with the camera, except for the fact that like they don't like how pretty everybody is. Uh, with that, the spot they and because what's up? Because you read that verbatim, I'm gonna read this one from first edition verbatim. Right. See, let me let me get myself in a stranglehold with this one. Yes, well, why do you call it analogy? 
about the Camarilla. Say you're learning to scuba dive. The instructor people always tell you never go under without a buddy or more than one. Why is that, you suppose? You're thinking maybe it's because if a shark shows up, you and your pals can team up and hit the fishy on the nose and they'll go away. Wrong. It's because when Jaws Jr. shows up, the more people you've got down there with you, the less chance it is that the shark will go after you first. And while he's munching on your buddy, you get the hell out of that water. Now, if he's got, oh, say, uh, six other guys to eat first, your chances of reaching the shore aren't, aren't that much improved. You see, now why we're in the Camarilla. Exactly. You go and die first, Ventru. <laughs> yep, basically. They, they've mean, got some choice uh, words for Ventru. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, because that. The Nose Rods have been doing this for years. They don't breach the masquerade unless you are brand spanking new and you make a newbie mistake in the Nosferatu. The, the, the ones breaching the masquerade are the Malkavians and the Bruja who don't know how to shut their fucking mouths. Yep. And then they get shit from the from the Ventru, and then all three of those collectively suffer while the Nosferatu are just sitting back watching it happen, making fun of it, making memes on trucking it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> moving on from that, of course, we have the Sabbat. Uh, they're they you know they're a group of vampires that hate humans even more than than the mount than the Nosferatu. Um, they they're vain and just they know. Um, I think they know nothing. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to like find out how he's trying to word this. I think he's talking to the person that wrote the book. Yeah, and I mean, this is all like um, like dialogue you're you're reading. Yeah, it is. That makes it kind of hard to like take notes for. They, yeah. you know, a human being is just another blood bag to the Sabbat. Human life means absolutely nothing to them, and they'll kill as many humans as they need to to survive. Um, but Sabbat Nosferatu tend to revel in being as freakish and unsightly as possible, uh, as the book quotes. And I love to give anyone who deals with them the creeps, hence their nickname. It Basically, they, they're all just freaky and they hate humans even more than most Nosferatu. The Nosferatu see a point in the Sabbat in first edition. They say they've got good ideas with the paths of enlightenment. And if there was a hope against the Antiluvians, this is it. Now, it's not a very good hope because they say... Hunting for the Antiluvians is like trying to hit a pinata at a party. You've got a blindfold on, you've got a massive stick, the Antiluvian is the pinata, but you're missing every one of your swings because you've got nobody leading you and you're blind as a bat going around smacking everybody around you at the party. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds about right. Yeah. You gotta get a you gotta get a man with gray hair and glasses and a tan. One Sylvester Shrek. That's you, Ryan. That's me, my over there. Hey! Get, Look who was muted. You gotta get the Zodiac on that. Let's do it. Right, look, if he ever comes <laughs> up to Canada, he's welcome. See, you'll be seeing him not that long in our live play. Not that, not that I, far from now. Please! Oh, That's my mate there, I miss him. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Colt's high enough level in animalism to actually get the, the fucking when to go to leave him alone. There's only one way to find out, I guess. Yeah, after all, you're up against a pretty dangerous one. Yeah, and you know what? I still haven't heard anything from my son. I need to get to New York myself now. I know that fucking Wendigo isn't going to do it. <laughs> isn't he dead? I think he, he is. is, actually. <laughs> he is. Yeah, Sorry, Rat Fred. <laughs> The soul lives on. No, no, Freddy is. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's dead. Yeah. Oh yeah. no, I th I meant the uh, the Wendigos. Say, well, you don't know. We don't know what happened. We he know went into the people. Umbra, and now he's fighting. Like I think something. I don't remember yeah, what it was. Gosh, but... yeah, it's kind of hard to describe what it looks like. <laughs> it's Gygus. It's just Gygus. This is the second Earthbound reference I'm making in this video. Okay, <laughs> so moving on to the individual uh, clans. First, you have the Bruja. They're, you know, fucking mean. They'll they'll kill you as soon as they look at you. They're leather-clad lost boys, as the book puts it. 
and are more than willing to stomp you into the pavement. They are violent and unpredictable, so watch what you say around them, because they are very, very eager to get into a fight over goddamn nothing. The Nosferatu will work with them, but they really don't like them, even though a Nosferatu with their potence could probably easily take one in a fight. And because of their revolutionary zeal, selling them information is incredibly easy. A lot of them are ludicrously gullible. Spread a few lies, and they'll charge off in seven directions at once. They're funny. They, they say that in first edition, too. They say some of the best jokes you can tell in the Camarilla is a Bruja being dead serious telling you their manifesto. <laughs> <laughs> He's see, not met well, the right now, then, hasn't he? See, you read Conquest of Bread, and you formed your entire life around that one book. Yep. <laughs> Basically, Ex yeah. Uh, then, then we get to talk about the fucked up monsters that I am, the Gangrel. Uh, so the Gangrel walked away from the Camarilla, and there was a part of him to begin with. Uh, we just sort of wandered off wherever. Then, the Nosferatu think they probably should have left before the Gangrel did. But the Gangrel tend to treat them better than most other clans, because the Gangrel, much like them, just want to be left alone, so they get along pretty well. Yeah. yeah Tui had a plotline where the Gangrel left the Camarilla, only to come right back and then leave again in 5th edition. Kind of weird. But the Gangrel kind of do that because the Gangrel are kind of sort of their own thing. Well, where... we, yeah, we don't need them. We can just go yeah, out in the woods and fuck off. It's matter of fact, it's quite really... nice out here care about anything i mean they just want to be animals out in nature they're like furries <laughs> but even more deranged but could you um, believe that Fre that freddy's that freddy's last mate puka is afraid of me who about that <laughs> oh he's an animal she's an animal <laughs> in first edition uh the notes want to say that the gangrel if they were to have a best friend it would be the gangrel um and their interaction is Hello, goodbye, that's it. That's their interaction. You stay in your area, we stay in our area, we respect each other's space, and that's their friendship. What if I bring one in the sewer, a case of beer and some cigars once a month just to see what's going on in the outside world? You, you, your visit can last 15 seconds after that. You have to, uh, 15 minutes after that, you get out of there. Oh, you know, that's fine with me. Who's like so for the beer and the cigars, so it doesn't matter. They've got a lot of Adeptus Mechanicus porn to watch. Yeah, you don't say. Um, <laughs> moving on from them, we have the Malkavians. Absolute fucking freaks. They can't stand them. They're dangerously unbalanced. They're either complete fools or complete murderers. They hate having anything to do with them. End of story. Yeah, the, the Malkavians, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so... Yeah, the, the, they freak the Nosferatu out. I mean, the, the stuff they say, um, when it's mad babbling, it freaks them out. When it's a prophetic vision of the Nektuku, it freaks them out. Them knowing about the Nektuku, it freaks them out. They don't like being around the Malkavians and want to get away from them as soon as possible. Yeah, that, I mean, that sounds you, about right. You, you be in a locked room with these guys. You see, well, you see how well you last. <laughs> My eyes are stare at Markov. I don't want to ever do that again. And no, I don't have to. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Uh, the Toreador. Toreador. <laughs> I, I kind of have to read. The bathroom on the floor. Yes. I have. To, I kind of <laughs> have to read this one verbatim. <clears throat> then there are the Toreador. You want me to tell you what I think about the Toreador? <laughs> <laughs> they're so damn fascinated by beauty they've forgotten how ugly their kind really is vampires pretending to be beautiful humans fawning over the prettiest portions of the immortal world it's like Jackson Pollock once said <laughs> Jackson Pollock's am I right? yes yeah, the, man, the man bent down a shadow over a canvas Yep. After eating 18 laxatives. Quite literally, the notes I had for Toreador is farts in the microphone, forgot how ugly their kind is, vomits blood. In first edition, they spend a blood point to vomit up blood on the wall just to describe the Toreador. Yeah, it sounds about right. <laughs> Let's see. 
Uh, um, the Tremere. I don't imagine. What's I up? don't imagine Tabitha, as sexy as she is, would get along that well with the with the Nosferatu. No, 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 nope. probably not. <laughs> oh, Cole liked her. She she was one of the few who was actually nice to him. So, Devi didn't. <laughs> no, Devi didn't like her. Devi liked it's Cole though. Right. Yeah, because Gangrel. Yeah, I know. Oh, what? But Colt being that's a married what? man, and also that's a Nosferatu. That's kind of gross. Yeah, you, Sylvester, and Vigo were the ones you liked. Yep. 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 And, okay. And uh, if Mark could go get that. The Tremere. Okay. Uh, they're warlocks, and they're also creepy, but they're also the most doomed vampires on Earth. Um, they're all bound together through a blood curse, spending eternally struggling against each other for power within their own clan. They're strong, but it's not worth the price of being trapped in that clan forever. Every one of them is out to screw over every other one of them for a slight leg up in the pyramid of power, whatever the fuck they call it. Uh, as far as business goes, they're always looking out for occult secrets, anything that helps them screw over the guy next to them. And uh, in first edition, they say that the Tremere, they have this fantastic PR representative because everybody's scared shitless of the Tremere when the Nosferatu do not care. They have no issue with it. That Tremere Chantry that's got all those sigils blocking it off, the Nosferatu already know how to break into it. <laughs> and if, if they want to break into it, they'll sell that information off to the Sabbat and then just watch the sparks fly. Oh, yeah. Please. Uh, That's all they gotta do. They say if you want more information on the Tremere, you gotta wire them twenty-five thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> if I knew a Bitcoin works, I'd do it. <laughs> anyway. So the, the Ventru. The Ventru of uh, fools. Wealthy, influential, and powerful fools. They seem to think that they're the most qualified to lead the Camarilla. And it's best to just let them, you know, uh, uh, subsist in that delusion. If they want to be the vanguard of the cam, then they'll be the first ones to get killed when the next Sabat Crusade comes to town. That's fine. And first edition, it's, um, oh, it's the hoardy toity fuckboy that thinks he's got control over me. I'm doing what you say because you got a smart idea, but the minute you go against clan interest, fuck it. I don't care what you have to say. Yep. Exactly. Pretty simple. Uh, Bert... Bertram Tongue in Bloodlines put put the best. Everybody wants to shit on the leader, but without the leader, you'd be falling apart. The Ventru are a means to an end for the Nosferatu. Because they're so good at leading, the Nosferatu do what they say, but the minute they start fucking up, the Nosferatu won't, won't hesitate to just abandon the Camarilla. I mean, the Ventru don't own them. No. And they probably do fine by themselves, a.k.a. look at Africa. I mean, they've been thinking about seceding many times, but they've never done it because the protection benefits of the, of the Camarilla are too good to skip out on. Yeah, but for how much longer? Anyway, uh, the Forever. Uh <laughs> the clanless, as they're called, darklings rejected by the creators. The only vampires in the world who got screwed over more than the Nosferatu. It's good to know they're not on the bottom, though. They need somebody to screw over. That's, but that's the way it's got to be. Oh well. They say the same thing in first edition. But yep. maybe one of my best I'm mates. I'm not gonna be the <laughs> Yep. I mean, yeah, uh, I guess um, Debbie only liked you, Sylvester. Out of pity. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know enough about Kadif to care, and I don't care about clans neither. All I know is that bastard kept me alive. <clears throat> hey, it's me, the Giovanni. Hey, it's me, the Giovanni. Hey, what are you talking about me? Oh, uh, well, I have the Asamites first, but. Oh, shit. Oh, I just do it. <laughs> okay. The Asamites. Uh, some of them are assassins, some are scholars, some are occultists, and they have grudges with adventure that go back centuries, so that makes them worth dealing with. Pretty simple. And the Asimites Asimite, in first edition uh, can't kill what you can't see. That's true. You might, might be the world's deadliest assassins, but you can't find us. Yep. So uh, 
big deal. Well, I mean, and, I don't know. and now it's a time for the Giovanni. Well, no, I've got Ravnos first. No, you're doing this on a purpose. <laughs> no, that's just the order the book is in. I'm sorry. Uh, they don't really care. The Nosferatu of nothing were stealing, and they and the Ravnos don't really care about information. But if they screw over the Toreador or Venture, that's fine. Yep. Same thing in one E. And now we can talk about the Giovanni. Okay. Um. The Nosferatu are used to being surrounded by vampires that they can't see, but they have no idea how to fight against the undead. They've only got rumors about how the Giovanni barter with ghosts to spy on the Nosferatu. But if they aren't trading that information away, it's kind of a waste. And um, in first edition, the Giovanni discussed the Nosferatu. And like we said... The brother and sister thing with the Giovanni. It's yeah, a book in the called right? Brother Sister. Yeah. <laughs> I was. Uh, I, wonder, I wonder why their lips are this fat and their skulls are this small. Yeah, I was. I was hanging out with a buddy of mine one time. We were sitting there drinking in his basement. I don't know how we got on the subject, but I started. We were talking about if Bobby Hill started reading hentai, and he was like, and Hank Hill walked in him, <laughs> and he's like, "Dad, I want a sister." Well, that's a nice thought, son. I mean, I don't think we could afford to have another kid, but I think it's very important that you'd want to take on more responsibilities as an older brother. No, Dad. I mean like a stepsister. The kind with curves that get stuck in the washing machine. Well, he's got Luann in the house for that. <laughs> <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> 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 I can hear that cringe from Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Ryan. That's all okay. <laughs> okay. The Sedites. <laughs> the Sedites are an enigma. They're supposed to be like blood cultists carrying out some master plan for Set. But, you know, aren't all the Camarilla kindred supposed to be pawns of the Antediluvians? They've got some talent for corrupting, exploiting pe people, but they're not any better at it than any other vampire. The Nosferatu raised a theory in this book saying that Set isn't even Antediluvian. What would he be then? He's an Ituku. Really? That's their theory, anyway. That could just be deliberate misinformation on part of the Nosferatu, because given how disgusting the Setites are, and that they are he's a blood sibling to Absimiliard, they probably want nothing to do with these guys. But yes. that does raise a theory. Is Set and the Setites blowing smoke up their own asses, and Set isn't even a true Antiluvian? Is, yes. there, is the theory that he's Generation 4? I mean, if a bunch of silent striders could just fuck around and kill him. But then again, all you all we needed to, you know, kick uh fucking Malkov back into a back into a different plane of existence were two totems and a couple of rank two Garrow and a mage. On top on top of that, you had the beast of war do the heavy, heavy lifting for you. I mean, yeah, but wouldn't have Malkov had the time to recover since then? To an extent, but at the same time, that's the beast of war. Getting bitten by that is going to fuck you up. I don't and... know. I mean, fucking uh, Elmira seemed to be seemed to do just fine. Yeah, looking at the, um, looking at his fight with a pep, I'm beginning to think fighting a in incarnation of the worm is a low bar for the Antediluvian standard. Because Set did win that fight, but that makes me wonder how many other Antilivians could also do that. Because I might have played Set up a little bit too much in an in Inner Ministry episode. I mean, Cause... a little bit, but at the same time, like, hey, a bunch of Silence Driders got him. Yeah, because I'm beginning to think that Set is not that impressive. Um, As the plot still, thickens. Still a hell of a fight, but in comparison, I'm pretty sure Absimiliard, if he were to fight Set, would fold him in half. Oh, definitely. 
No, like yes. Serpentis <laughs> can only get you so far, and that is if you can actually hit something. But Absimiliard is way too hard to actually, you know, reach. It can just punch right through the scales, too. Yep. Okay, uh, moving on, uh, there's the other Supernaturals, starting off with our good friends the Garrow. Um, he once saw a Nosferatu crush a skull of him with a single blow, but more than likely it was uh, just luck. Um, probably safer to just hide from them. But there are a few Garrow who are as down and out as they are. Um, you know, leaders, tip as, as it's written in the litany, typically the leader gets the first share of the kill. And the rest ends up chewing the bones. Uh, it, they don't mention the Bonars by name, but we all know they've mentioned homeless werewolves. But they aren't yes. sure whether to trust them or to throw a stake over their shoulder and run. We do have that entry in the Bonars book, second edition, that they did team up during the Great Depression. Uh, they didn't really have much of a choice and, then. Everybody was down and out. Now, there. in first edition, they have two entries on the werewolves. The first one is werewolves in general, where they say they want the countryside, they can have it. We're going to stick to the city. I ain't, I ain't going out to the country because that's where the werewolves are. But they also bring up a werewolf tribe by name in here. The Black Spiral Dancers. Oh, no. And they say that these guys come into the places that they're trying to turn into havens and turn them into polluted shitholes. And they're crazier than the Malkavians, madder than the Bruja, absolutely serve no purpose to anybody but themselves, and they just destroy, destroy, destroy. The Nosferatu have a bounty out for the Black Spirals saying, please, anybody, step up to the plate and kill them all. Just do it. You know, Leech, so, I might want to tear your guts up and string you out to the nearest tree, but I think we got a bigger problem that we need to worry about. There, there's your cockle hook right there. The Nostratu teaming up with any, vent, any werewolf pack to deal some BSDs. Yep, that'd be fun. There we go. Okay, uh, then See. we have mages. The wizard. Yes, they're somehow worse than the... They're, they're worse than the Tremere, but they're kind of weak. I mean, they're humans, I think. Like They start not... bleeding to death after taking three levels of damage. Yeah, knives and guns are still lethal to them. But their magic does also have a funny way of backfiring. So they're not too tough. They're surprised Paradox. that the mages didn't die out a long time ago. Let's see. And they, they say they're, they're like the Tremere, but boring. I'm, I'm surprised their strategy isn't trying to bore me to death. Instead of, I don't know, shooting me with a fireball. They say you don't want to screw these guys, but they've seen enough mages die to paradox that they're not scared of them. Where, how do you deal with a mage? Stand in public. They can't use their magic in a public space like that. Yep. Or, noticing... I don't know, live, live stream your encounter with a mage. See how quickly it falls apart. I'm noticing the fact that both games you've played have taken place, have taken part, or sorry, taken place in a point in which there are very few people around to breach the veil. Mm -hmm. It's more fun that way because you get to see both the werewolves and mages go full blast on what they can do. That's fair. Like okay. Freya Sanders, if we were having to worry about the veil, would be a whole lot less useful as a time wizard. Yes. Okay. I uh playing a game right in the middle of Chicago for my vampire exactly. the masquerade game. Oh yeah. and we'll just turn on presence and oh. it'll be fine. Uh. Walk around. Uh just to have the whole um I'm too sexy playing as you walk down the street. Yep. Fucking... I'm currently uh good. Currently fighting for uh domination of uh, a certain group. Gotcha. See, as a venture should. Yes. See, you t you're telling me about this uh, this game. You're doing fantastic, dog. See here. And right. so what else do we have? Uh, we have the ghosts. Fairies. Well, we have. Oh, sorry, ghosts. Ghosts. Yeah. So there are spooky guys hiding from the real world. Uh, but they can't really do anything in it. They can just watch what's going on. 
Uh, that's about it. And no entry in first edition on these guys. Weird. And then fairies, a uh, little happy dappy shit, big fucking deal. They say, I don't believe in fairies. I don't think Tinkerbell's real. This is stupid that you're telling me about fairies. So if I were to see a fairy, I'd grab it, grind it up, and shove it into a blender and drink its juicy fairy blood. Okay, I'm not uh, letting him into my show. Cool. Yeah, uh, gonna have um, gonna have a few issues with uh, <laughs> with uh, Danny Grand Slam on that one. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it if he's got Wayfarer, <laughs> that he's it's over for him. <laughs> okay. Uh, as long as he lands that first shot, that that fight's done. Yep. Hunters, they don't think they're actually human. They there's no way that a human is that efficient at killing them. Uh, well, they kind of aren't anymore. Yeah, they believe that they're possessed by angels. They have no res- I mean, there's no respect for a vampire who's sloppy enough to kill from the kin he feeds from. But he has even less respect for a human who thinks it's his duty to kill every vampire. They're some other kind of monster. Some kind of monster. It's our favorite album from Metallica. <laughs> yes. Now, but- I thought... I've thought about if you were to make another World of Darkness game, where would you go? And I told you about that idea of giants where kind of blurring the line between Fomori and its own thing. But at the same time, doing something with angels in World of Darkness where you have an, a, a reverse of Demon of Fallen and see what kind of game you could do with that. Where... I think Classic World of Darkness has got everything covered, but that is the one other thing you could add into the game. What, now, be co- what would you call it? Angel the, Angel the Salvation? Angel the Defender. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Uh, or Angel the Blessed, depending on why I think I want to do with it. Eh, I guess it depends. Anyway. And... I didn't take uh, many notes on adversaries, but all they really talk about is the Niktuku and other creepy things that uh, hang around in the sewers. I got an Angel the Guardian. That's what I'd call it. Angel the Guardian. That'd be good. Yeah. And yeah, the Niktuku, uh, don't ever encounter one. Yep. No, no matter what clan you're from. <laughs> yep. You're, if, the Niktuku are the Asimites, but scarier. Yeah. Because... It's like when I was talking with them with about the Malkavians, and I brought the Anku. That level of freaky. Where, let's see, what else do we got with Nosferatu? Uh, Orion, you got any Nosferatu ideas? No, not really. Um, see, it's pretty straightforward clan for you. Yeah. Where, looking at what else they've got, because, yeah, like I said before. The Nosferatu anti tribu are pretty much the same as the Nosferatu Camarilla, because really the Nosferatu could just be anything, as long as you're in that whole miserable circumstances. We haven't discussed how painful the embrace is yet, have we? We have not. So it's a seven day process after your embrace. You wake up and you are in horrible ath- arthritic pain during the first day. As you begin to feel your bones and your joints creak and warp. As your intestines begin to shrivel up like prunes. Like raisins. And then days two through four, you begin to feel your organs either completely fill with blood, making room for your blood po- points. Or they just pop like water balloons inside of your body. You can feel them explode if they do that. And... That stays in your body or it shoots out of you and leaves a hole in your body. Along with that, your skin will immediately turn pale and cling to your bones and atrophied muscles upon that. Days 5 through 6, you begin to rot. Your nose will fall right off your face. Your ears will drop off or become pointy. Or maybe your nose becomes super long like a goblin's. Along with that, the shape of your bones and your skull begin to permanently warp. Your eyes become dead and hollow. And every inch of hair on your body falls off. And then seven, that's when the transformation completes where everything like that happens again all at once and your body forces itself into the shape of the Nosferatu. You have absolutely to blame for the way you look. 
basically, all you have to do is listen to the Hearst song by Rusty Cage, and that about covers it. Do not laugh as the hearse go by, or you'll be the next to die. Yes. They eat your eyes, then they eat your nose. The worms like crawl in, in the toes. worms crawl out, the worms yeah. lay pinnacle on your snout. It's, it's, it's the same as cards, but you just take out the face cards. You just take out the monkeys. Yep. Let's see, and let's make some splats. Let's, let's go ahead and make some splats. Yes. So who did we say in uh, Werewolf versus Vampire that the Nosferatu would fight? I paired them up with the Black Furies. And I don't know after because, reading this book if that's still the case. That's because both of those groups start off at zero, and the Nosferatu learned how to live in misery, while the Black Furies went from being the bottom of the werewolf of werewolf society to debatably the number three strongest clan in the entire werewolf society, behind maybe the that's Shadow cool. Lords and the Uctena, behind the Shadow Lords and the Glasswalkers. Yeah. The Shell Lord's debatable, too. You could swap them out with the Children of Gaia. I don't, the Children of Gaia are numerous, but they're not necessarily strong. They made a ton of progress in the 60s. Yes. Well, yeah. That was like the whole but, New Age movement. They gained a lot of steam through that. Um, and it was more, more about the uh, <laughs> being from an ostracized group, where in wolf society, the women are subservient. The, the, the she-wolves are subservient to the male wolves. The Nosferatu in Camarilla society are expected to be the beast of burden curing the entire crap Camarilla. And really, they both have these super tight-knit sisterhoods and brotherhoods with each other. And that's the reason why I pair them up with each other. Yeah. Although yeah. I do but... like the idea of the uh, the Nosferatu Garrow truce in order to in order to eliminate the black spirals from a region. I think that uh, would be a fucking cool story. They got something coming with the Fianna in that case. Because, say, the Nosferatu say, uh, approach the Fianna and say, we're done with you pussyfooting around. You're killing the BSDs today. We have this massive <laughs> dossier of information. We have all their hives, plans on how to invade those already. The resources to do so either purchased or stolen from other clans, we're doing this operation tonight. And that is your... That's your game. But shite, I'm a bird. <laughs> that could also apply with the Geth Enris too, where the, the Nosferatu paid the Geth Enris to do that. But that would, that would result funny. in the... That would result in the GOF becoming the pure, and that would just speed up the, the apocalypse. Yeah. Huh. You ready to be that ready would, to become pure? That might ground? actually be an even more interesting plot line. So, well, like being the Nosferatu and trying to broker that deal. Well, yeah, either that yeah. or like trying to be, say, like a Shadow Lord who realizes that's going on and realizing that if the get of the get were to succeed, then that would invite Gehenna. Same same thing with the Shadow Lords and their whole faction with the masks. Seeing if you can ease over the Netuku and get them on your side, if you can. You can't. You have to kill Absimiliar to do so. So, behold, get the Shallowers to handle your Antiluvian problem for you. And then, once he dies, the curse gets changed, the blood bonds break, and that's either the biggest triumph or the biggest failure of the Shallowers, depending on how that plays out. I mean, you want this partnership to work out, right, Shadow Lords? And yeah, I mean, yeah. Let's see, what's next? Silver Fang? No, not Silver Fangs. I don't even think of something for them. I um, mean, Glasswalkers and Nosferatu would go hand in hand. Well, Stargazers, uh, well, well, yeah, because the internet. Yep. Have a hacking war between the two. That honestly would be kind of neat. <laughs> I don't know how and, I'd yeah. play that out mechanically, but that'd be fucking cool. You gotta break into the Glasswalkers database and steal all their plans for the next car. Yep. But, and behold, we will be the ones to invent Tesla, not you. Yep. Or it could be, yeah. so, if you wanted to go like Nosferatu, um, you know, against, say, something like Telus. 
Oh yeah. That if somebody could take down that cool. company, it would be Nosferatu. Yeah, that'd be a fucking cool matchup. Or you could just call the virtual adepts. Yeah, but they're I mean, unreliable and the Nosferatu don't like mages. And last group I'm thinking of is the Octena and Stargazers. Because, you know, both of those groups thirst for information. Yes. And Osferatu have no so, shortage of occult secrets from the Tremere. Exactly. Maybe they know how to prevent the apocalypse. And they just, you know, demand $25 million from the Actena for it. No, they probably got that money. We are going to steal $1 million. Yeah, one... <laughs> Billion dollars. P play as the Doctor oh, Evil Nosferatu. Oh, yeah. That's uh, yeah. first so, thing that came to mind for me. So you mean to tell me <laughs> that you emailed me five hundred billion Bitcoin just so the world doesn't end? Well, shit. Okay, that's a lot of money. <laughs> you sound like George Lucas. <laughs> Well, shit, okay, I mean, that's a lot of money. <laughs> George Lucas and Nosferatu. <laughs> <laughs> See, Emperor Palpatine was actually inspired by, um, by, by my condition. The attempt on my life has left me scarred. See, we have this movie, we have this Nosferatu, he goes to space, and he goes and finds all the Gungas out in outer space. Emperor Palpatine is just a Nosferatu. He embraces George hey, Andrews, and he becomes Nosferatu. Oh my god. I, I think I remember, um, I think it was Mark <laughs> Hamill reading something about, um, something about episode one, and he was like, only one terrible thing has been brought to this galaxy. Gungans. If I had my way, I'd kill them all. And he asked the guy he's interviewing, he's like, what's a Gungan? And he goes, Jar Jar Binks' race. He's like, oh, <laughs> that actually makes sense. <laughs> That's, that, of course, is his worst decision with episode one, but, you know, there, there are plenty of other issues with the project. I might have gone too far to few places. pod racing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god! I See, love when I was a one. kid, I thought that movie was the tightest shit ever. Like I had like the book on tape of that movie when I was a kid. Because you watch that movie, and nothing else like that exists. No. And then you, and then you look at it as an adult, and you think, "Well, as a kid, I was interested in this." No. Then I got, I have my N sixty four, and I've got Episode One Pod Racer on it, and that came fucks. Yeah. There you go. And then you have the arcade cabinet. The arcade cabinet was fucking awesome. Let's see. See, Sorry, wizard. off topic. So, uh, wizards, wizards, going down the line, Akashic Brotherhood. Yes, um, Damn, that's because what? the Akashic Brotherhood specializes in the mind sphere. You need a big brain that will so remember does the all dream this, speakers. But... See, no, that spirit. Oh, see, now thinking about this, the Nosratu. Sure, they know a lot. Sure, they live a long time, but you still have a human brain. You you're going to need some help remembering all this. So why not contact your fellow Akashic brother and have him expand your mind? Behold, you want a spell that's going to take your thought and turn it into some, a physical object where you automatically remember it by touching it. The mage can make that. That's kind of fucking neat. I literally just described California King Bed from JoJo. Yes, that is the name of a stand. And along with that, the Akashic Brotherhood have this massive ass library filled with all the ancient Shaolin texts. I imagine kind of Nosferatu too. would want to get their hands on that. Shaolin Showdown, let's go. And then we will be the masters of the Shaolin Vampire Kung Fu. That's an old show. Uh, yeah, but that show is awesome. Yeah. That throws you through a memory hole. Yeah. I had uh, the PS version of that game. There was a game? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. the fuck? Fu fu Holy shit, I need it now. I'm going to say, I'm going to send it to you while we're talking about this next bit. Please. Um, and looking at the Celestial Chorus. Uh, Probably not. 
Probably not. Probably not. I don't think they would. Let's see. Yeah, there's your copy of the game. Yeah, let me... There's the Wikipedia page, at least. Oh, that explains we didn't hear about it. At least at the ass end of the PlayStation 2's life cycle. Uh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, that show is awesome. Yeah, it was pretty much Super Smash Brothers. I'm okay with that. Let's see what what else is there? The I can imagine them buying stuff off the Cult of Ecstasy, but they wouldn't spend that much time around them, given the Nostratu don't like being in groups and the Cult of Ecstasy are all about the shared experience. Just give me my ayahuasca so I can trip by myself. Yep. Give me this. I don't need a okay, sitter. That is all I'm here for. I don't need a sitter for this Salvia trip. I'll be fine. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to live through the nightmare of being a doorknob for nine years. No. Let's see, Dream Speakers, no. Euthanatos, I imagine them hiring the Euthanatos, but I don't think they'd have much of a relationship beyond a simple business transaction. Yep. Um, hey, you people like wasting people who are wastes of life. Here, here's a list of names and 50,000 Bitcoin. You pay them to handle the, the Asimites coming a little too close to their territory in Africa. <laughs> see, um, the Hermetics. The Hermetics do have a lot of books and a lot of information, but once again, they wouldn't really want to associate themselves with the Order of Hermes. Given... Given that these guys made the Tremere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Sons of Ether, uh, give us your science equipment and then get out of our house. I need um, a new GPU, please. Same with the virtual adapts, where once again, just sell me the stuff and then get out. And then for the Verbena, I'm pretty sure they would want nothing to do with the Verbena. Yes. It, Given that you're the witches that cast spells from blood and semen mixed in a bowl. Yeah, that that that's far even for the Nosferatu. They might smell bad, but they don't want to make things smell worse. Exactly. And now you can smell like cat urine with the flip of a switch. I mean, you they already have animalism. You could just get a cat. <laughs> and the conventions. Um, well, first of all, we can rule the Nafandi and the Marauders out. They won't want anything to do with them. No. Um, conventions. Iteration X. Once again, another group that would make a lot of useful stuff, but I don't think the Nosferatu would keep contact with them. The New World Order can get bent. They won't want to talk to them. Same with the progenitors. They have nothing the Nosferatu is going to be looking for. Even if they make the most scientifically perfect perfume, it won't be able to mask the smell for that long. No, the curse is um, a curse. The Syndicate. I'm pretty sure they would love to hack into Fort Knox and get all the Syndicate's gold. It'd that'd be really be, funny. That'd make for a fun little heist with you and your Ravnos. Um, the Ravnos, the Nosferatu. And let's go ahead and let's throw a Serpent of the Light Setite in there. I don't know, maybe a Bruja because, you know, you're sticking it to the man. Yeah, those those four vampires doing a heist on the Syndicate. That'd be a cool one-shot. And... Next up, the Void Engineers, and the Nosferatu could not care less about space. So yeah, they'd have no reason to talk to the Technocrats. I've played Portal, it didn't look very good. <laughs> Just put on the VR goggles in their, in their sewer haven. Yep. They'd rather go back to watching their Hatsune Miku hentai. Um, changelings. Well, like we said, they don't give a shit about Changelings. But like we said, if they encounter... Actually, what would happen if they encountered a Slua? Try to drink its blood. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Now, I remember the Slua in their book say that they know about the Nosferatu, they've talked with the Nosferatu, but they kept their interactions brief. And once again, the Slua don't want to be around banal adults. The Slua would rather go around and find a weirdo kid to hang around all day. Yep. Teach them how to do tarot card readings and shit. And how to collect spiders and butterflies. And the Nosferatu just don't want to talk to a fairy that looks like a Tim Burton character or a ring wraith from Lord of the Rings. I don't know, I have a couple of them hanging around my house. They're quite pleasant, matter of fact. 
uh, any other, not the knockers, not the issue, uh, nobody really. No, they don't like anyone. fairies. Yeah, even the Unseelie Court, I don't see them interacting that much with them. I can you know, see. just don't like people. <laughs> no, they don't. But you know what? It can't help but respect that. See, um, Wraiths, the man of Wraiths shows up, they're calling an exorcist, they're getting it out. Yep. They don't like anybody yep. spying on them. See, you think you're going to mix Nosferatu and Wraiths? No, they're just going to call the Tremere and then get the Wraith out of their house. Yep. And that's going to be the end of that game. <laughs> Nozomi, the uh, fucking ghost is back. Let's see. Oh, I see. Give me one moment. I'll prepare the incantation. Hurry up. It's and... crying about its daughter. I don't want to listen to this anymore. <laughs> and then Demon the Fallen. So you're going down the line. Uh, Lucifer, Schmucifer. They want, want to talk with Lucifer and his Luciferians. Um, he same goes with on the preaching about his perfect little human race. It's nothing like that. The, the, uh, a cryptic, a cryptic could have a tempting offer, but the Nosferatu, I feel, would rather get the information themselves than pay a cryptic for it. I mean, the the business transaction for inform information is to be handled by the Nosferatu as the salesman, not the buyer. Man, I can't. I yeah. after reading this book, I really want to play Mickey now. Yeah, <laughs> these guys got some stones. Yeah, uh, he's got stones and he's a sarcastic shit. See, Ravengers. Well, it would be fun for them to pay a Ravenger to ravage somebody that's giving them shit. But, you know, get the carrot on the stick, throw the stick in the in the house you want destroyed, and then run like hell afterwards. Hey, um, Ravenger, there's, there's, there's a Venture over there. He's in Vancouver. And he almost got me killed back in 1971. Do you want to help me kill him? No. No, you do have the relationship between Baba Yaga and Bezerial. You remember this, right? Yeah, but wait, right. which uh, which demon was Bezerial? Bezerial was, I think he's, I think he's Earthbound, but no, no, I don't think he's strong enough to be Earthbound. I think he's a Ravenger, where he partners up with Baba Yaga because Baba Yaga supplies him with the blood uh, for his blood powers. And then he goes out and kills because it's fun. So, I suppose that would be a very good minion, but you are going to have to be very careful because that's a that that's a demon you're making a pact with. Um, yeah, the Faustians. The Faustians are going to have to lie about this. You go over to the you go over to the Nosferatu and say, "I can take away your vampirism. I can restore your looks." If you sign what little soul you have to me. How many of them would say yes? That depends on how jaded they are. If they yeah. are, if it's like a sewer rat or a leather face, no. If it's, what were the, there was one good one. I don't remember what they were called. Let me see. Well, it's the Fagin, but. Oh, were the, was it the Fagans? I thought there was like another one. The Martyrs. I mean, they are. They are okay. I mean, if it was a pagan or a martyr, then maybe. Oh yeah, the martyrs who uh, we we didn't mention them. Uh, it's um, pre you've seen Daredevil two thousand three where he's obsessed with brooding. Yes, he yeah. says, oh, "Oh, I live like shit, so other people can live decent lives." Yeah, that that kind of shit. Yeah. Where, so. <clears throat> yeah, uh, the Nosferatu superhero. That'd be a fun little concept. That would be neat. I mean, you saw a glass. You saw Unbreakable, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I imagine this. I saw being the a lot end like of that. Unbreakable. Yeah. Where have a, have a Nosferatu in your game running around with a with a with a pandemic face mask, wearing a black raincoat? Yeah, that'd be a character. And lastly, the Reconcilers. I think they could see some empathy with the Reconcilers, and if they appear angelic enough, could recruit the Bruja, uh, the Nosferatu for something, because, you know, that's an angel of God just in your haven. You're not going to say no to that when that shows up. No. But I don't think the Nosferatu are going to go out and pursue a, converse, um, a relationship with the Reconcilers. 
Yeah, maybe. You know, not. you've got your own personal quest for redemption. I've got my life. I'm trying to live by myself. You go off and do your you do your angel boy. I'm just gonna stay here. Yep. And there we go. Um, you're friends with nobody but your own family. Yeah. Unless yeah, you happen across a gangrel, you might exactly. be all right with them. Or the Ravnos, depending on who you are. Yeah, but the Nosferatu are a really neat clan. They're they're very hard to properly implement into a game, but if you can manage to pull it off, you're going to have a lot of fun. Very self-sustainable, too, where you might be your, your Coterie's Alpha, so to speak, if you play as a, as a Nosferatu. Yeah, it, it, I is. mean, if you even if you have looks zero, which you're basically required to as a Nosferatu, if you can yeah. still talk your way out of trouble, then... You're, are you're, you've got an ace in the hole. Then remember, your telephone will be your best friend through the whole game. You know, phone, computer, whatever <laughs> you can do. You carry around a laptop on you. You have access to everything. The you, most raw two only fans. Just stay away from Telus. Oh, I swear to God. <laughs> you're, you're saying, Ryan. No, it's just the thought of a Nosferatu only fans oh. disturbs me a little bit. <laughs> Good lord. As, um, but back when I worked at Sonic, um, we got bored one day and we came up with a, like, the parody for what ass pussy. We call it stank ass pussy. Stank ass pussy. Yeah, like think, like think about that. We came up with like a fake music video for it and we had like the... Um, like the shot from the graduate with like the man between the woman's legs, where the the legs are close to the camera, the man's far away. Yep. And you have that shot, and then you like see like a centipede crawl out from between the legs. Ew. You have that with an Osra too. That's. <laughs> I will need a pair of that. You can judge me all you like for having a human wife, but that's not gonna fucking happen. See, I mean, there's men out there that think women with. Massive body hair and green skin is sexy, so there probably is somebody that thinks that Nosferatu is pretty hot. I'm sure there is, and I would hate to find out who. And I'd hate to find a poor degenerate that thinks that Nosferatu are sexy. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I think that about tears it for this episode. <laughs> Play the Nosferatu. They're fun. And the, the episode went down the toilet right at the very end. Yep. <laughs> He's talking about vagina. Undead See? vagina. And bugs inside of them. Yeah. Uh, All right. That's, we're we're <laughs> in the episode here. Good night, everybody. <laughs> have, have a good one, guys. GN. <laughs>